will need to be G with the line of sight and with a glance on the to push them to not for proteins. Signatures identified. Neutralize the nests. Guard the exits. They're here. For the past four weeks, the world's been training up, picking which teams to send to the United Kingdom next month. It's time for North America to follow suit. Six teams remain, but only three can survive this week as we transition into a gauntlet where only the strong survive. Live from Philadelphia, welcome to the Rainbow Six Manchester Major North American Playoffs. I'm Caliber Jacob Anders, and I'm joined as always by former world champion Gabriel Laxing Miralez, the North American savant himself, Jesse J. Chick, and boys, it's finally time to find out who we send to the UK. I can't believe it's already playoffs, to be completely honest. I feel like there's still a lot more siege that needs to be played to lead back into another playoffs. I just feel like we got here so fast. Yeah, we did, but I mean, we got rid of all the teams that couldn't make it here. The bottom three have been eliminated. Now we have just the best of the best, and it's best of threes as well. This is where Rainbow Six really shines. I'm super excited. We had to find a way to whittle all of the weak teams out of the pool, and we have finally done that. Unfortunately, this time around, it means Los, Sonics, and Wildcard will not be participants this weekend, but everybody else will be. Beast Coast and OXG are going to get a first round bye, and then we get to whittle finally down to BO3s, because we've been waiting for that for the past month. I mean, you never thought, looking at this that beast coast was <laughs> going to be the one leading this given how they started but yep. again this it it just goes to show like how exciting this entire stage has been the upsets that happened and i mean even for beast coast the improvement that they showed seriously 
Yeah, and I mean, like, even the teams that got knocked out, aside from Los, it was so close for the teams that were trying to get in. Wildcard and, and Sonic's only a point or two off of making it into the playoffs. Wildcard even going out on tiebreakers. So it really did come down to the wire. Obviously, those teams that were knocked out will still have a chance. The LCQ awaits them, except for Los, who lost in the open quals this week. But for everybody else, the major is still possible. It's just a lot harder. Quick go over for those who are unfamiliar with this. It's single elimination in the quarterfinals. If you lose that, you're done. You make it to semis. Then it becomes double elimination if you were to win said third place match. So the path is pretty simple. All you have to do is make the grand finals and you're going to Manchester or you have to win that third place match. And then the fifth place is going to also help us determine who places where in the LCQ next week. Yeah, key thing here for both Beast Coast and Oxygen, all they have to do is win one best of three out of two to make it into Manchester. For the teams that played today, if they do not win this first BO3, they cannot make it directly. They've got to go through the last chance qualifier. So that's a very scary first couple of games. Well, it's also nice to be in those positions for Beast Coast and Oxygen. You got to get it, you get to sit pretty. You get to watch the other teams, mm -hmm. you know, make the strats that you want to make going against those teams. You get to be more prepared than the other team, but it also goes off the hard work that they put into it to allow themselves to be in that position. There are two teams that get first round buys they're not playing today that's beast coast and oxg everybody else in this playoff bracket has to play quarterfinals because those two guys got a first round buy schedule is as follows we start with space station and m80 in the first quarterfinal then move directly into luminosity and dark zero both of them are intriguing for very different reasons i think one of them is two good really no known powerhouses and the other one is a team with no expectations against a team that had high expectations and didn't meet them so it's going to be a good day yeah, absolutely. I mean, this first game, having two titans of North America, the fact that one of them immediately has to get sent down to the last chance qualifier will be devastating. And then for Dark Zero Luminosity, that's one that I think at the start of the stage, you would have thought easy for DZ. But now at this point, with the way that the stage has run out, it really could be anybody's game. Yeah, I mean, my predictions definitely got shuffled throughout this entire stage of picking, I think that was the, picking case the right for everybody. teams, picking <laughs> yeah. the wrong teams. Low specifically really threw me under the bus there. I mean, wild card in the end, yeah. I've been sticking with you guys. You kind of threw me under the bus a little bit there, but, you know, it is all good. It is what it is. Now, the big prize right here sitting to my left, the North American League Predictions Championship is on the line. This thing is getting distributed to one of the guys on the couch or the analyst who couldn't be here this week, so it'll all come down to just these, these couple of best of threes. First game on deck, first quarter final. Final, number three against number six, it's M80 against Space Station, which is interesting because they played earlier on Consulate. It was only about two weeks ago. M80 came out the victor in that game. It was 7-5. It was really close, but you got to figure that Space Station are going to be out for blood in this game. Yeah, seeding really doesn't tell the story for this matchup. Although it is the number three seed versus the number six seed, these two teams are very, very close in skill level. We've seen both of them reach incredible heights. M80 have undoubtedly had the better stage thus far. They've looked more like a unit despite being a much newer team. They've had that big individual moments that have come through and have won a lot of games for them. Whereas Space Station, I think they look like a good team. They look better than the sixth place team in North America, but small mistakes have consistently plagued them and it's consistently brought them down and down these standings to the point where they are only here because they had tiebreaker over wildcard. Yeah, and you say that, I mean, specifically with Space Station, I mean, they started out extremely strong. They started out way better than their previous stage, and it was like, oh, wow, like, this is the team that we wanted Space Station to be. And then they immediately fell flat. And like you were saying, it was those small mistakes that were really putting them under the bus. The performance from every individual player, like, I wouldn't say it was just on one person. Like, that was a team yeah. performance. A lot of those rounds came down to miscommunication, misplay, over-rotate. That was losing them. And then they didn't end up clenching that last win. But, I mean, they did fall hard. So, sometimes you got to get that experience. You got to understand that okay we do have issues we do got to solve this but now you're in playoffs and i think gomez said it best as long as you make playoffs that is the most important thing well it was an inverse start for space station compared to stage two of last year they started 0-4 got nothing won their last four to ensure they at least were contenders by the end this time three games straight and then a four game losing streak to now put them in this position they did win their last game so by their own merit they are still here and a one or two tiebreaker thing is going their way but it's still not the sort of position that this team specifically should have been in to start the stage. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, they did make a roster move to start the stage. They brought Iconic in. You can see his stats aren't the best here, but I certainly by no means think that he has been the problem on the roster. I don't think that that has been the key focal point of their issues. I think they have struggled at times just due to the fact that, you know, maybe they can't get a wall open. Maybe they can't set the pace sometimes in these matches. And the fact that they get that 7-3 win over auction at the very end is massive because OXG were one of the favorite teams to um, make it into the top two, even if they didn't get there uh well, no, they did get there in the end. Yeah. So that's a great team to, to get a win over. And so for Space Station Gaming, the, the lows are a little concerning, but the highs are really quite high, and I think that's big for them. 
on the opposite side, M80 is looking way better, but uh, somehow they have the they have the most wins of anybody in the league currently, and yet they don't have top two protection. Yeah, and that's good to bring into that because this is a brand new roster that we talked about. We weren't sure what it was going to look like for them, but I mean, specific players for me that have stuck out the most right now has been Kino. Obviously, he had a terrible season the last stage and yep. throughout their performances through all, and now he's finding his groove on the team. He's finding that success and that we know that we've seen from him throughout Oxygen, that we saw through him on X set. So I'm personally just just glad as a former teammate of Kino and him being like a little brother to me that he is finding success with this roster and they are finding themselves in a pretty good position. Oh, Daddy Lax is having, <laughs> he's having a proud Laxon, moment. Big yeah. Brother <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think for, for M80, what's really impressed me has been their early rounds. They're actually one of the only teams in the top six right now that have a positive entry win rate. A lot of the teams that were doing well on entry throughout the group stage didn't make it here to playoffs. Yeah. So it's been nice seeing M80 be so consistent in the early game. Obviously, they haven't been the most consistent in terms of winning every single game, but even like when you take a look at this, uh, at this graphic, you can see they're winning a huge majority of them. Yeah, and this is what I even wanted to talk about was interesting to me and for you guys. This was when M80 first came in with the original X set roster. That's how their first stage looked on that left side. Then going into 2024, this is now their brand new iteration of this roster. And this goes into what I was saying with Kino having that performance, Spoit being on the team, still performing extremely well. I mean, again, you're finding the success here. It's just a matter of now can you clench Manchester that you're in this playoff position. Yeah, and it's interesting to compare these two lineups because obviously these were both two kind of new rosters mm -hmm. that came into the scene. And this roster has clipped a lot faster. Yes. I think the key players like Spoy and Kino who have maybe maintained over the two rosters are playing really, really well as individuals. It feels like they're more comfortable with their current teammates than what we saw for them through all of last year. I think Kino in particular has been so, so good. I'm glad you hit on him because his level of consistency, even some of the areas where he was struggling, like the we Monty plays. Montang. Even when he's on Monty though, <laughs> yeah. he's Took a lot better. Shields and we were fine, yeah. yeah so, so it's nice seeing not only the new players on the team stepping up and uh, adding to that success for M80, but also the old players are playing better with their new teammates, and so it's an improvement all around. This also isn't something we do very often, but it doesn't come up very often where a matchup can get distilled down to one specific head-to-head, -head, one 1v1 that feels like it's the determining factor of the entire series. In best of ones, it's a little harder to determine, but in a best of three, when you have some of the best players on both teams mm -hmm. going at one another, it makes thing is really interesting. Ashen is the one guy we have to talk about to start with for Space Station. Well, I've been talking about Ashen a lot throughout <laughs> this stage. He's been a wonderful performer for SSG in general. I mean, he's such an integral piece for this roster and the performance that he puts up. I mean, you cannot talk about Ashen if you're talking about SSG. Like, he mm -hmm. needs to be the topic of discussion with the plays that he's been making. And for me, he's been making tons of plays since he started the league and where he's at now. He's made such a tremendous impact, not only in his career, but in overall SSG's performance as a whole. Yeah, I think Ashen has been obviously the wonder kid for Space Station. He's their uh, new player from last year. He's come in as their main entry fragger. You see the KDs here. Oh, he's gotten better and better and better throughout the events. And I think the big thing through the last couple of weeks is he has been a little bit flexing. Uh, he's been flexing a little bit more on some of the other roles as well, playing some Capital, playing some of these more util operators. So he contributes to the team in so many ways. He's undoubtedly a great player. Yeah, and the biggest thing for me is, especially the EPS rating, is that you are seeing that performance. Well, 101, 101 right. to a 105, now to a 120. He hasn't peaked yet. Like, I think the skill ceiling for Ash, and I've talked about throughout the stage, is still extremely high. I think there's still a lot of unobtained spots that he's reached yet that he will continue to reach, but he goes forward. But that also goes into the SSG thing is he needs to be performing. That needs to be there in order for SSG success to continue rolling through these playoffs. But he has been performing, and for a good chunk of this stage, he's been within top three yeah. overall rated players, one of the better KD He's the best overall. player, in my opinion. Best player in NA? Best well, player in NA, in my opinion. Well, other than Spoit, I assume you mean. Because Spoit's in the league, maybe you forgot about that. Listen, Ashton overall, in terms of performance and everything as a whole, Ashton has it secured. No, 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 no. We got to pull up the head-to-head -head stats. I mean, Spoit, first of all, take check out these clips. He has been so much the focal point of M80. In my mind, he leads right now as the MVP of the North American League. The way he is been able to work his way around the map, the way he plays on defense as kind of this individual player who can make these huge massive plays, but also on attack, coming through, finding the frags, finding the entry picks for his teammates. Everybody works around Spoit to cause the chaos. You put him in an individual position on the defense somewhere out on the map, he's guaranteed to come back with three or four heads. He's just so good in these tight positions. And I think the way that Spoit has been playing, you have to argue that he is right now the best performing player in the North American League. And just to dunk on you a little bit harder on these stats, <laughs> 
He's the only player so far in the NAL to have over 100 kills. He's the most kills of anybody else. He's one of the highest rated players in the NAL. Yes, the KDR is a little bit better for Ashen, but when you look at the entries, as both these two players are, when you look at the cost, all the statistics point towards Spoit. He has been the North American League's best player so far, and I think that you can't deny it based on the numbers. I'll say he caught up to Ashen. That's what I'll say <laughs> what happened. Wow. He caught up to Ashen, because for a long time throughout this stage, Ashen was absolutely carrying in all of these fields. He did catch up, but no, you can't discredit Spoit. Spoit is a wonderful performer for M80 and just his own individual skill. Sure, Let's and then talk about this. listen, even when they've gone head to head, I went back and I took a look at the stats historically. This counts last year and this year. These two players have played against each other twice through their careers. Ashen, despite having lots of successes in his history, has never beaten Spoit seven to three, the head to head kills for these two players. Ooh. Ashen has always performed well in these matchups, but never against Spoit. Well, say this given with how this game could turn out this could change each other's stats entirely one person could easily shoot over the other person depending how You're this right. game or they out. could both do really well and we're just in a yeah. deadlock yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure because that that is the story of both of these guys it's very much if, if one of them doesn't perform their team also seems it, like they fall off a cliff and that's where i was saying with ashen is ssg's performance so far this stage in my opinion has heavily relied off ashen's performance and like you were talking about the flexibility that he brings into the team getting into the map getting that entry like it's so pivotal for ssg for ashen's performance well it's funny that you guys brought up both of those guys because we sat down with spoit and ashen just to overview what their quarterfinal is going to look like from their perspective and what they thought of their opponents coming into today A big reason as to why M80 uh, works out very well right now is because obviously we have a lot of chemistry. I mean, me, uh, Noodle and Citizen, we've known each other since years ago. It's it's a natural thing over there, but with me and Kino, we, we played with the team for over a year together, so that's not a big surprise. The only thing I would say is, you know, starting a cameraman into the team, you know, him speaking English uh, for the first time in a English speaking team. So we just got to give it some time and it's just going to get better uh, as soon as we gel even better with each other. Um, obviously, you know, we had a great start of the season, you know, 3-0, and and then a little shaky. We lost our uh, next four games, but I wouldn't say it's more um, issues that um, need like drastic change or anything like that. It's more or less just small little details that, you know, drastically change around and, you know, obviously tighten those up for playoffs and we'll be fine. I think that, uh, you know, everyone on our team can have a pop off moment. And so I think, you know, that's good to have, especially in best ones where, you know, you don't have a lot of opportunity for like a comeback or a change, you know, to come back in the game. So um, going to the best of threes. Keeping keeping that uh, keep that in the back of our pockets and just you know being able to make those big plays, I think it's going to be very influential for us to uh, stay in the, stay ahead inside the game. The gaps in the SSG roster, it's uh, it's a tricky one because they can get ahead of themselves a little too much sometimes. They you know they speed things up. They kind of you know let the randomness take over a little bit. I think that's like a a thing that will let them down a little bit. So I guess it's just like noticing these gaps in inside of the server and, you know, capitalizing them with your team, you know, cooking up small mini plays together. Oh, you push this, I push this, uh, peek with me, three, two, one, stuff like that, so. Uh, what gaps I see in the MED roster is that um, they uh, they might not have the best attention span. They love spam and TikTok, Instagram reels, all that. So it's got to take advantage of that, you know, maybe catch someone lacking mid round. That best one on consulate. Yeah, um, we had some we had some pretty good attacks, but our defenses surprisingly on consulate is what uh, kind of led to our our like our our loss. You know, there were definitely a little bit of like throws in that uh, defensive half. So like, you know, just one more round in that game, you know, goes overtime, goes a, maybe possibly a different way. So um, looking for the rematch, just. Uh, yeah, just gotta just gotta work on you know closing these things out. Now there's actually like stuff on the line, so I guess the nerves is gonna be there for everyone. And it's just like make sure you feel you're 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 just in the moment playing. We played it before. This is my third NAL stage uh, as a player, so yeah, it's the same thing. I've been here before. I'm gonna do it again. Yeah. Good scouting on both teams coming into today. It seems like both Spoit and Ashen have a good sense of what to expect, but specifically for Ashen, to call the guys on M80 short attention span TikTok little kids, that's the sort of thing that makes me really hope that Space Station are dialed I mean, in here. Spoit was scared. They just showed the cam. Spoit wasn't even there. <laughs> Spoit just left. Like, he listened to this entire thing. He's scared of Ashen. I mean, honestly, he did say it's going to come down to kind of the nerves. Now it's when the pressure is the highest. And I think Space Station have been very, very good historically at 
dealing with those nerves. They're, they've got one of the best mental, if not the best Absolutely. mental, inside of North America. That's always been one of their strong points. So that's going to be an area where we need Sploit and the rest of NA80 to kind of pick it up and make sure they are all locking it down, playing to their peak performance. Because if you get nervous now, that's going to be bad. He's also 100% right. Now games really matter because we're mm. not talking best of ones. It's not the seeding thing anymore. We are finally back in best of threes. First four bands are already off the board. Just as a reminder, it goes through the band phase with four bands, then two picks, last two bands, plus a decider, and it's Space Station's map pick on deck first. They've opted for bank, and I'm curious how that one's going to go. That's a, oh boy. Hmm. Yeah, I think, I mean, Space Station, interestingly, banning out the labs here kind of caught my eye just due to the fact that it's a map that, yes, they've banned it a lot throughout the stage, but they've never seen M80 play it. And also, last time they played M80, they did not ban it. I think that was one of the, if not the only, then one of the only uh, games where they chose not to ban Nighthaven labs. They'll ban it here in the first phase, though, clearly a little bit afraid of it. I was going to say, gives M80 the choice of Clubhouse or Consulate. They pick Consulate. That's the map they beat Space Station on during the regular season. Yep. This consulate map, so bank, I think, is a little bit of a toss-up. That can go one way, but when you're M80 picking consulate here, that game was close. That was relatively it close. It was 7-5. Actually, yeah. said, you know, that could have easily been, you know, one round, one little small mistake that didn't happen could have put that in overtime and we could have saw something different. I mean, that's massive going into that map when you're the losing team because that really allows you to focus in and hone in on where your mistakes were. Sure, as the winning team, I just... The losing team usually runs away with that and understands it a little better. Not to say that you can't walk away with that winning team. Sure. Now you're looking at Skyscraper. I don't think I maybe looked very impressive versus LG. I want to say LG did put up a good performance against them. I think Hat really had that yep. tremendous performance that really excelled LG into that uh, into that win nonetheless. But this is a situation where I see these maps where Bank could be a toss-up, but then going into these last two, I think they do heavily favor SSG. Last little wild card about the phase, Space Station start on defense on both maps, meaning that they're going to have a really good chance to have hot starts. Does that factor into predictions? Gentlemen, I hate to break it to you, but the amount of time you had to win this thing and make sure Foxy doesn't get it is basically dwindling. There's almost no time left to actually claim this bad boy. So it's time for no more mistakes, no screw-ups, Got to be 100% sure about who you're going with. Lax, right now, you're tied with Jesse. What are you going to do? What are you going to do to leap over Fox? I, I, gotta go, I mean, I got to go with SSG. Um, and last week's really threw my entire percentage off. Like It did that for everybody. Yeah. You, <laughs> you would have rough I was in the week. lead. I you would have a rough lead. week. Yeah, it was rough. But yeah, I'm going with SSG. Okay. I mean, I already said it in the uh, in the earlier section. I think Spoid is the best player in North America right now. I got confidence that he and the boys can can hold this down. I'm going to side with Fox. It's going to be tough for me to keep up just because he is ahead of me, but I'll catch him on another game. I think M80 are going to be the favorites to win this one, so I'll pick them. Well, you made a mistake because this. Ashton's the best player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Spoid wasn't even we'll in the camera. Wasn't even we'll in the camera. Spoid wasn't even in the camera. Yeah, he's stretching. He's scared. He's shaking. He's getting active. Ashton was stretching, getting the sitting blood there, moving. intimidating. No. Whatever. All right. Whatever. Just, just as a reminder, while these guys fight it out, this is not a prediction done on a per map basis. Those are calls that are now locked in for the entirety of the series. If they want to win this, the North American League Championship for predictions, they're going to have to make a count right here and right now. Parker McKay and Nicholas Moritzson are ringside on bank for our first quarter final, and that starts right now. It's playoffs day, Nicholas, and you are very large. You are much larger than usual. We have brought you into the fold just as we are bringing these two teams into the fold. And I gotta say, this line gets trotted out all the time, Nick, where how close things have been, I don't know exactly how they're gonna end up. Well, in this particular case, I genuinely don't know what the result of this matchup is going to be. Yeah, it's a toss up. You know, I mean, I think the desk broke it down. Ashen, Sport, pop off players, pop off teams. And I mean, I gotta give the slight edge here to M80. I think they've been the better team so far. They've had more pop off moments. They got Sport. So I'm gonna support the EU boys here on this one. I, I mean, Sport comes in today as the highest rated player in the region. He's the only player to break 100 Yo. kills. Ashen is not far behind at 93, but then after that, it falls off of a cliff. Everybody else seems to be lumped up in the 60s. Anson's at 77, but not going to see wild card. So, I mean, obviously, this M80 team is starting to really gel. But SSG, while they don't exactly have the same high-flying performers that M80 might, SSG as a unit has been a pretty solid squad. 
Yeah, they have. I mean, you can't deny it. And I mean, I, I think Ashen broke it down well in his interview. They started off hot. They had like three victories in a row. Then things just didn't really work out. I think it was four losses he said in a row, back to back to back to back. I think SSG, if they show up on the day, they can definitely match those top teams if uh, in NA. So it's a matter of day by day performance. So, and I mean, now it's do or die. You're in playoffs. Okay, you have you have last chance qualifiers if you lose. But let's be honest, you don't want to go there. This is more or less your last shot. Like, this is where you really want your performance to show. Avoid LCQs. Avoid that mess that is down there. You just go clean in playoffs. Yeah, you're out. As far as I'm aware, Nick, you're out here. You're out across the board. That's it. That's all she wrote. So you don't have a lower bracket to go for, to go through. The open qualifiers are currently ongoing right now. There's been some striking results. <laughs> Los, one of the North America League teams, the team that is fortunately at the bottom of the NAL standings is already out of the open qualifiers. They had a really rough go of it, losing to some unexpected teams, let's put it that way. So for the rest of these teams, you're gonna be on the outside looking in, right? But for the teams that are actually in the cut and thrust, you've got one shot. OXG and Beast Coast finished first and second. They play tomorrow. So they will play the winners of these matches, the losers of these matches are done, that's it, goodbye. M80 and Space Station will play OXG. Dark Zero Luminosity plays Beast Coast. I don't know if, if you have any thoughts on those matches right now as we're just waiting on one more player before we can get the matchup started. But let's talk about these maps for a second here. Okay. Look at the map pool that is listed in front of us. Bank, consulate, maybe skyscraper if required. And what is your immediate first thought? My first thought is that this could be a very slow best of three. I mean, all three maps of bank, consulate, and skyscraper can be one of those attackers gotta get in the building, roam clear, deal with all these issues, and execute 20 seconds left. And I'm curious to see if either M80 or SSG can pick up the pace because if you are an excellent team on the attacking side, you can go quick, but it does require either a stupid amount of confidence or a game plan that is defined to go guys we need to catch them by surprise and i think a team like a and ssg they both thrive in the chaos so if everything's going you know as the usual norm kind of slow a uh, slow rounds i don't know who's gonna come on top i want to see the chaos and i think those these teams that can bring it they might give us a very exciting couple of maps here that usually as i said could be very like slow and almost dreadful sometimes I don't know if it's just simply the fact that it's a bigger matchup, but everybody's webcam situation seems to have improved dramatically. It's better. It's so Maybe in better. particular, we don't we don't have the gigantic uh, citizen head anymore. People Did recall they, uh... he was. There he is. Good form. We'll work on that later. <laughs> it was it was directly up in his face full screen, but it looks like the facilities for M80 have been upgraded. We also saw what appeared to be a different background for Forest, if memory serves me correctly. I think Everybody so too. raising their game. Nothing's changed with Ashen, nothing changed with Iconic. It looked like Fultz was in the same room with his USN trophy, not far behind him. Uh, set the stage for this matchup as we now get ready to queue into Bank, picked by Space Station, starting on defense. This is a map, Nick, that has been played a decent amount in the NA League. It's tied for fourth with Consulate, which will be the next map that we see. And Bank is an attacker-favored map. There's a couple attacker-favored maps in right now in North America. And when I say a couple, I mean two, Bank and Cafe. Locker CCTV downstairs is the most played bomb site, but only has 32% of all rounds won by the defenders. How do you, if you're SSG and you're starting on defense, how do you change those numbers to ensure that one of what was one of the most reliable bomb sites for defenders can play out that way to maybe give you an advantage and have SSG win more than maybe two or three rounds <laughs> starting on defense? That is a good question. I mean, operator bands can be a big determining factor on a map like Bank, whether it's like Kaid for basement hatches, Asami for upstairs, you know, Castle to lock down some clear positions. It really comes down to, I think, either how you want to play this map going forward or counting your opponent. When SSG played OHG on Bank and they won 7-3, they banned the Ying and the Kaid. Here, that's the... Oh, 
Well, that's not really the case. So they have changed things up a little bit. Now, for example, opting with the Monty ban, targeting it towards Emedi specifically. And it makes sense, right? If Emedi wants to go in quickly and speed things up, Monty is one of those operators and can do that. So, makes sense. Well, just as we were in the match, we're now out. Unfortunately, there's a break ready for us. We'll come back in just a couple minutes. to get underway with our very first round here on bank Attackers need to locate you can see this is the bomb. upper quarter final for these teams in the playoffs and what nick is at stake for both of these squads 
Well, not the biggest prize, but the second biggest. This is not a spot for invitationals, but of course, for a major, if you go all the way through playoffs, you win or you get top three, so to speak, in this case, you will go to Manchester Major in May next month. And every single team wants to go to the major, build those SI points, get the experience, raise a trophy, win some money, and of course, get the fame. Well, these two teams, you would probably expect them to make it when you go back in time and go, you know, when NL started, you know, it's just GMA team. They go into national events. They play well domestically. They're going to go there. Might not be the case. Attackers are moving out to locate a bomb and This is the bomb site that we talked about before we tossed to a break, by the way. This downstairs bomb site. Locker CCTV is the official name in game. We often just refer to it as CCTV or basement, some people will say. The lowest win rate of all of the bomb sites played here on Bank. Of course, the one thing to note is that Eller's archives has not been played at all in this region. 48 rounds of Bank have been played, which is the third most way behind both Clubhouse and Oregon. Both of those maps, by the way, have been banned out. As you can see from the top right of your screen, SSG picked bank, which is where we'll go first. M80 feeling consulate and Skyscraper will be the decider should it be required. M80 have wasted no time getting into the building. I don't know if Citizen was droned in or just got in on his own, but the old top square with Spoit now looking through Dirt Tunnel. Silhouettes from SSG let us know that there's at least one player nearby servers, maybe even in servers itself, and there's Iconic. Hmm. Sending Still rocking the Zidane name, by the way. Yep, some things never change. And I mean, hey, I mean, you're going for it, you're going for it, but come on, man, bring it back. Let us know who you are. New fans watching, they're like, who is, who is Zidane, by the way? Well, it's Iconic, now you know. It was a fast beginning round here on the attack from Mady, but it's slowed down significantly since. Maverick in the lobby hatch, and you can see it's just kind of roaming around, they're rotating. Guys, what's happening? Okay, they're breaching the lobby hatch. I guess they're gonna go for a lobby attack, but that's not the case. While the Maverick opened the lobby side, they're also attacking servers from third tunnel and top staircase. But again, utility first. Reach the hatch, can tell in, then peek the staircase. Forest was blinded very briefly. Kino sees the smoke go out, and Forest maybe swings at the inopportune time. I don't think he expected the Ying to be so close. They droned out Iconic inside of servers, though. Never mind, he's scampered back towards red. One minute remaining, and still tons of utility for M80 as they find themselves in the numbers advantage. To buy themselves some time, Space Station hit those Goyo canisters. Unfortunately for them, the numbers not working in their favor at all. Noodle and Cameraman taking some damage for Cameraman. It's fatal. SSG have lost two, though. Only one Nitro Cell remains, that it's in the hands of J90. Ashen dies. And I know, might not get an opportunity to throw that Nitro as he's inside a red being hunted down. Iconic from over towards Vault will escape. And Citizen posted up in the other direction. Down goes J90 and it's all up to Iconic who's picked off from Citizen on that spot on stairs. Not a surprise that bomb site does not buck the trend. Another successful attacking round on this mostly attacker sided map. It, it did look like an easy round, though, from M80. I mean, they very casually walked into the building. No roam was there. Fair enough. You know, it's a turtle strat from SSG playing safe on the bomb side. But then you think, okay, server staircase, clearing out servers, that's going to be like that pivotal moment where defense will get a couple of kills or do a bunch of damage. But no, Kino throws a single or Candela, reaches the hatch, throws a second Candela, walks in, just like one taps forest. Server stairs control, surrendered. It's iconic. Falls back from servers to a bomb site as well. Surrendered. They go into the bomb site walls, pop those square canisters before the fire even disappears. 20 seconds. They pick up kills from main stairs, from garage, and of course from the deep server angle in towards the red hallway. SSG didn't even get to play their basic defense execute of trying to deny the plant. They didn't even get the round really started. And when you're going into these kind of best of threes, you can afford to have a couple of slow rounds. I mean, you can even have a slow map. Losing bank right now is not the biggest issue for either team. But when you are the team that picked it, being SSG, you're expected to go, you know, decent kind of round score, get a good kind of outcome, because otherwise, if you can't win your map pick, how's it going to go in your opponents? So we got to see SSG kind of warm up here, get the first round in, get the second round in, and then be fired on all cylinders and actually shovel on the server, executing the strats and playing better together. Obviously, this doesn't have anything to do with bomb site specific talk, but 
Would it surprise you that the two lowest rated players in the NA League right now are in this match? It, it wouldn't, it wouldn't. But are they, are they on the same team? <laughs> they are, it's actually Iconic and Forest. Oh yeah, there it is. Iconic That's... and Forest, not only the two lowest rated players, but among the two lowest number of kills oh. in the entire league. And that is what is most surprising to me. There are only two players in the whole league with fewer kills than Iconic and Forest. One of them is Canadian, who will be competing okay. later today. The other is Dream, who will be competing tomorrow for OXG. But the fact that Iconic and Forest have been this bad statistically is not great. The best performer on the team is Ashen, second highest rated player in the league. 93 kills to his name. He won't find any at all through this matchup. SSG doing a much better job of defending this time around. M80 will draw even. Half the round to go, and Jane I know is pushed off of that spot. So much of the focus from M80's entry was upstairs inside of CEO, despite the bomb site being open area. How did Cameron survive for that long? He got the perfect timing, got past Jane I know upstairs, and just like got shot at, she fought at, ran in, got a kill. When did his cam or the Dokebi gadget mid gunfight basically, and still to this day, he's alive. 20 HP, but he's still there. It's a 3v3, kind of favored towards defense here. They got the bomb site locked down. They also got the extension to archives. So the big saving goes from AT. Citizen on the buck. Destroy that floor vertically with these yellow pings. Try and get at least one kill onto defense and get that man count advantage. Citizen's got the read on it and he executes J90. M80 will regain the advantage that they got early on in the round. It was short lived as SSG fired back. Those two lowest rated players that I talked about, Forrest and Iconic, are the last two standing for SSG. They beat the numbers and they hold up this assault from M80. Having the numbers advantage means that Citizen on this butt can just sit upstairs. Kino attempting to drop a Candela, but failing. It'll go off, but no targets from SSG are spotted. There's also the Warden on the board, so it won't be as effective. Those smart glasses are going. Down goes Forrest to Cameraman and Iconic. Good enough for one kill. Where's the coverage? Never mind. Citizen gets the job done himself. I don't know if there's audio issues, but it's looked to be like him saying that he couldn't hear at all. That round looked like for a moment it was giving hope to SSG's fans, but MAD just continues to roll through these two rounds. Yeah, they do. Again, they make it look pretty easy. A bit of a, I don't want to say sloppiness from SSG, but it just looks like they're not ready. Before this game started, we kind of broke down how, you know, this could be a very chaotic game of bank that typically it's very slow paced and predictable. M80, they stormed into lobby, rappled in CEO windows and just like said, okay, we're going to attack top four and do the roam clear. And we don't care if we're going to lose one, two or three players doing so. And they're very much buying into, we might as well lose or win the round on the roam than to very slowly walk through the map and eventually suffocate and not have time. So I like this approach. It's like it's all or nothing on the attacking side. And right now, very clearly, it's working out. SSG, they have made a couple of changes here. Of course, it's a different bomb site. Now they're defending top floor before it was an open area and basement. But they're playing a lot of different utilities, right? Maestro Evil Eyes, Warden Deployable Shields, Castle Barricades, and the Wamai with the Magnets to strengthen those player positions, like they for a grenade or a Capital Firebolt, for example. So SSG are very much, I don't want to say scared, but they want to be comfortable behind utility now to strengthen their positions and make it hard for Mady to walk in the building. And I think it's strategically the right approach because the issue has been and Mady are just running through the building, nothing is stopping them and the gunfights are not there for SSG. So they're stopping playing the gun game, playing more utility, and this could be a good law from them. Well, nothing has so far worked for Space Station. They've only got four kills through those two rounds. One of them was a relatively impactless kill from Iconic in the previous round. Round number one was far more decisive for M80, so at least we see SSG putting up a bit of a fight. SSG does obviously have the less than favorable side on their own map. That's typically how it works. It would be shocking if the opposite were true. You pick a map and then your opponents say, no, we're, you know, we're going to start on the hard side. <laughs> SSG will have to start on defense. they have already got two rounds through and, well... Probably not the start that they wanted. It's crazy to think with how lopsided we saw defenders versus attackers 
at SI, the tank is now back to being attacker favored, but it's a very good time, I feel like, under old uh, map pools, that bank was typically good for the attackers. Same with yeah. the old chalet, same with coastline. Yeah. So you had your attacker favored maps, your defender favored maps. Now it's mostly all defender favored. Skyscraper and consulate are defender favored. We'll get to consulate. We don't know if we'll need skyscraper. Talking a lot about the hypotheticals because there's been limited oh. action until there. Ashen gets on the board. Another on Repel, and this is a tough angle for him to play off of. Down goes Kino, M80 losing on their entry. Player still on Repel. Last standing player for SSG in the previous round is now gone. The first one to die, a citizen walks in and kills Iconic. Loading mag. Still got those, you've still got those bulletproof cameras, you've still got those maestro cameras as well, up to give information, as now M80 figures out where they want to attack from. Really smart defense. Ashen and aggressive inside the you know four window room with forces dog sting him back to full HP twice in that round, surviving the capital fire, getting that initial kill, and just holding on. And now with those early kills, SSG again, they post themselves up in corners, they have crossfires. Every single player has a backup nearby for a second kill. This means when it made it go for the execute, they're always in an unfavorable spot here, and they gotta hit some crazy shots to break this round apart. Well, M80's equalized, and now they've been given an advantage. The hands of Citizen and Spoit. Citizen 6 and 0. Oh. Maestro of Fault still tucked inside of Elevator. Another for Citizen. A 4K easily within reach. The cameraman might get there first. They have no information. Fultz emerges. Citizen gets the kill, but downed otherwise. He still survives. A 4K from Ben, and it's a 3 0 start for M80. Frustration beginning to set in on the faces of the Space Station players. Yeah, I mean, that's the kind of round where you're expecting that you should win it. You, you get the two-for-one trade favoring SSD side. They use their Dark Sims on Ashen. They have all their crucial player positions still up tight, or upright, rather. And again, it made it to do the same thing as before. They will walk up a staircase, they'll walk into a room, and they'll just simply be the better players individually getting those kills. I also think SSG, you have someone like Ashen who's very happy to play in the front lines, who's seeking gunfights, you know, fighting his opponents. And then you have other players in that round that are playing more, you know, far back. Someone like Forrest, someone like Iconic, who's had a rough season so far. They're not really playing that front four positions with their teammates, leaving a small gap to be exploited by M80. And they're very happily doing so, and also very successfully doing so. It's, uh... I don't want to say a masterclass in attacking because I do think that this is a mixture of good attacks with subpar defenses. But I mean, you don't care if you're maybe whether you're playing the perfect round or not. You're just happy that you're getting these three rounds and you're building so much confidence. And it's going to go into not just bank in the upcoming rounds, but also the next map of Consulate, where if you have a really good showcasing on bank, your opponent's map pick, oh, you're going to go into Consulate laughing because that's your pick. You know that you're the better player. You're hitting all your shots. You got the confidence built up. As you see, they really got to figure out how to break this apart. I like the Solus here. A little bit more aggression, right? But then we look at the right side of our screen. Smoke, Mute, Warden, Echo. The complete opposite. It's nothing like the Solus where you're thinking roaming, hunting down the attackers, shutting down the entries. It's just kind of plant the eye and Solus. So I want to see Steve fully committing to one strat and I just have Ash on his own trying to, you know, be the hero, so to speak. Well, you hope that from a competitive standpoint, the timeout just taken by Space Station will at least make it for a more even matchup. There were some okay looks from SSG in that third round, but there's very obvious struggles that the team is having, and slowing down Citizen has been a key struggle that a lot of teams have battled with. Was, that was it when he was on G2, on Sonics, and now as well on M80. He's starting off 8-0. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's been the sports show for quite a while. Why not have someone else actually step up this time? It's also Bank. Bank is a map where there's a lot of dy dynamic approach to this, like verticality, roam clean, etc. Citizen Squid at reading the pace of the round. Cameraman will just jump himself into the middle of the room and just fight multiple defenders again and just prone the floor, hide, and create chaos. Down goes J90 to Citizen. This man does not slow down. 9-0, and oh, the start from the buck of M80. Ashen knows that there's one nearby. Doesn't have the exact whereabouts. One thing that M80 won't know 
is that hatch opened up. It's just been opened for Space Station. Cameraman's waiting for a late flank through lobby. Ashen will make his presence known. Drop briefly looked to be attempted, and that is a misplay by Ashen. He overstays his welcome. Yeah, he swings. They're playing plant and again, you see force. Force being so far back, not helping Ashen. Ashen could have dropped, but instead swings out. So HT playing two different attack or defenses right now and it's falling apart because of it. There's no intel. Look at that nitro cell that just got ripped. M80 is full control of the bomb site. Where is the Ow. vertical play? Where is your site presence? Forest and Iconic are maybe miles away. Hold on, there's Iconic. Springs out of elevator, shut down by cameraman. Now Forest still looking for his first kill. He's got four targets. Which one of them has its name? The barrel of his gun over now towards stairs. Looks the wrong way, expecting Noodle to be farther down. Picked apart, M80, only a single player remains. Fultz shutting down Spoit, diffuser goes down. Reload from Fultz now, and it's a pick your poison. When you drop, which direction are you gonna look in? I don't know if Fultz has much information to play off of, whether the Yokai drones are still there or not. Noodle gets the job done. He started by repelling or slingshotting himself all the way up to CEO before transitioning towards the bottom floor. M80, undefeated so far on SSG's map. Man, it, Cameraman is doing a really good job at getting a lot of value, even though it doesn't look like it. Beginning of the round, just sprints into lobby, gets the attention of two different defenders, so Fultz and Ashen, and will just hide in a corner, prone the floor, holding a passive angle, waiting for them to push. While that's happening, you have the rest of Amadi working the opposite side of the map. Top skylight, top main staircase, cutting off the rotations, and starting to pick off those defenders and getting those kills. After Amadi get the first opening pick, you're expecting to do one of two things. Either you aggress as a team, you try and get back that numbers to be equal to a 4 vs 4 or 3 vs 3, or you simply cut your losses, go back to the bottom side, and play out your Echo, Smoke, Mute C4 playstyle. And they do the third option, which isn't a real option. It's more like a mistake, right? A misplay where Ashen will swing out the elevator door, not drop down the hatch. Fultz, while Ashen swings, will back off and play safe, throw a random C4, and then that's it. So you waste the C4 without intel. Ashen dies alone. Neither player can fall back. And then you have last player alive being Fultz upstairs, far from the bomb site. You can't drop down that hatch because you'll just die. Attacks are planted. They're holding those covers, etc. It's really messy. It's just, again, like SSG is not you know, operating as a five man unit. It's like almost like five individual players who just got together for this game today and are kind of playing off the vibes. And the vibes right now are not all that good. They might need just like. I was going to say a tactical timeout, but they took that earlier as well. Like, <laughs> they just need to reset, essentially. They got to really reset, like a hard reset button. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you're going to let the map try to play itself out for you, yeah. right? You know that you start on defense. You know that adversity is going to smack you in the face the moment that you begin this match. And that there's an awful lot of bad vibes you're going to experience for these first six rounds. I mean, maybe not. Maybe they do buck that trend. But time and time again, we see the attackers winning more rounds on this map. So you've got some pain ahead of you, but for SSG, it should get easier. Forrest with a jump out, he secures his first kill, but his fifth death will follow shortly thereafter. His noodle was on repel, Spoit as his teammates back. There's some toxic gas to go off. Cameron gets swung Ooh. on. Ashen with the super shorty, and he also gets Spoit. It's all up to Citizen and Kino. SSG throwing caution to the wind. They decide to go all out. They decide to go all in, and so far it looks like it was a good gamble. Bigger task, though. Shut down Citizen. He's yet to die through four rounds, and we're halfway through round five. He'll put himself in harm's way. Now he's playing over by square. Oh, okay. That's... That's Reload. not... You gotta check his... You gotta check his computer. That's Someone not. Check his PC. He's a very, he's a very skilled player, but that's not. It's not normal. That's not, that's not normal. N and O, by the way, for Citizen Advantage, still for SSG. Final minute awaits us. Surely they don't win, like lose this round for SSG, right? Because they made the right play again. They committed this time. 
Forrest flying out a window. Ashen holding a scrum. But look at the three other defenders. Bolt, J9O, and Iconic have been very quiet this round. Again, not playing to that bigger system. But because Ashen got that 2k, because Forrest traded his own life with a 1 for 1, they do have the meta advantage. They have one Toxic Babe, they have one C4, they got into on Valkyrie and Roof of Camera. They have, again, the positions and the tools, but they need to actually hold the crossfires. And not that they may find those what? individual kills. Grenade sails out from Citizen's hands. He seems immortal at this point, and... Are there any god killers on the side of SSG? Citizen now moving into position. Kino holding on to that diffuser. Citizen making an awful lot of noise. They both inch ever closer. It's all up to Citizen, who can find another 4K with almost Ooh. no time left. But J9O not just shuts down the round for M80, but most importantly, the first and only person to shut down Citizen so far in this match. A 5-0 was within the hands of M80, but it slipped at the final moment as SSG wins their first round. And I think it's fair to say, like I mentioned earlier, that yeah, it's just to start on the, the worst side of defense, and you know, you know it's gonna be a painful time, but we gotta look at how every single round plays out. Even in that round victory for Space Station, it comes down to a 1v1 where M80, they have no time left. And that was SG's right, best yeah. round so far. It was four jumping out, Ashen getting a 2k, and they still almost lose out. So it's not so much about the starting side, it's not about the round count per se. Even in SG, they go two, four and a half of win this upcoming defense of CEO. It's still been a brutal many, many, many rounds in this game so far. And again, we gotta see that same life from Forrest, jumping out a window. The way Bang Triple D is played out is if you just trade your bodies one for one, it favors defense. In a 5v5, attackers have so many positions to attack from, so many angles to lock down. If you go 4v4, little bit better for defense. 3v3, little bit better for defense. I think if you're a space station, do that again. Just like say, you know what, I am gonna throw my life away, but I'm gonna take someone down with me and my team is gonna clutch up and be in a better position because of it. Because so far, maybe they have been that better team in equal numbers, especially when it comes to having many guns available. Citizen Fanning is taken down, but still, are you gonna be mad about that? Are you are 12 and one? I mean, that fire that Citizen can bring in every single round, that's not gonna slow down because he's finally dead. It's gonna continue right where it left off. Oh, it's been a debilitating start for Space Station, but even though there's no real momentum mechanic in this game, you at least want to keep your head in the match. And for a team like SSG, they usually don't seem to be in poor spirits, even when they're getting walloped. This is a very crucial game for them. And well, I think part of the strategy for Space Station is let's maybe play a little bit less structured. Over the last three rounds, there's been more unpredictability baked into Space Station's roams. And it's working. Ashen started it off. Iconic just got a kill. Yeah, they lost J9O. But as long as you can keep M80 guessing, it seems to be working. That is until Noodle equalizes by picking off Iconic inside of Conference. And now some bees will go over towards Elevators, where yet another silhouette lays. Maestro of Foltz manages to get out of there, but M80 get very valuable information from that. You know there's a player over by Elevator. That only leaves two unaccounted for. Ashen was last seen near the bomb site, so then the question becomes, where is Forrest? Well, here he is. Solus is usually down below on this bomb site, but he's sitting right next to the A-bomb chassis inside a CEO. And Magnum has saved him. No, Sigon goes out. That's gonna give his position surely here. The beast pop. He's all oh, forest. He's got the read. He's found the gap of the yellow pings though. They have information on forest, but not the exact location. There's the swing onto the open breach. Or well, not quite a breach, but at least an opening that could get their way into the site. Forest ducking for cover. Is it citizen and cameraman? Forest what? running for the hill. <laughs> take cameraman down, but spoiled <laughs> Claymore there. He's been dead for a while. He still has an impact on this round. Last alive yet again, a citizen. He'll make an ungodly amount of noise. Ashen and Foltz, very disciplined, very patient. And there's Foltz to start unloading. If you're a citizen, you gotta take that engagement. There's no way around it. That's just a bullet hose that'll be spraying towards you for the next four or five seconds, allowing the last player of SSG to get into position. So citizen takes the swing, it doesn't work out. But ultimately, I think it was the right call. Iconic, very motivated by that one. You can see gesturing towards his monitor. Oh, yeah. SSG wins their second round, and that's the first half in the books. And that's a much more like an SSG round where, yeah, they fight back, they rotate, they actually, you know, move around the bomb site. Forest, 
oh man, this guy is stepping up and deeps being the kind of player that Space Station has been missing on defense so far. Finding those small gaps, always repositioning, swinging with the intel, and he gets the first kill on towards heaven, sprints towards the bomb side, straight out the window. Like, there's no hesitation. And again, he trades his body in a one-for-one, -one, putting his team in a better spot. Forrest, right now, is three and six in terms of killing. He's not that much worse than his teammates. They're all on four kills and some deaths, but very impactful couple of skills from Forrest, all three of those. Not the same can be said about necessarily every other player who's gotten kills in like a, you know, one versus four, or like a two versus five or whatever, and then like they've lost the round. Side swap, medieval start basement, same as SSG, but they will not do that turtle kind of game. They are roaming, they're playing open air, they got Castle Barricades, they got Fenrir, they got Goyu for the side as well. They are playing both levels right now, playing that the, the onions, the layers, if you will, on bank, covering all their bases. You know, getting very active now on this dirt tall Spoid is somehow taking an awful lot of damage as... You know, on smoke is a sight to behold. Is he expecting an early rush? That's the real question. One logic bomb's already gone off, so that's entirely possible. Maybe it's just to aid the drone work that was going through that part of the map. I mean, you've already got Kino to burn one of his toxic babes. That's pretty good value right off the rip. You're not gonna make it, are you? Oh, no, 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 no. I don't think he made it to get the Casper, but I could be wrong. Let's see. Second try. He just moved like two steps forward, but that's gonna make all the difference. Wait, wait. Yeah, he missed it. But this time, Casper could confirm. There you go. It might seem like a, a relatively small error, but you've only got four of those Rotero drones available. And most teams are gonna have them accounted for in some way, shape, or form. You look at what the defenders are bringing, right? You're already gonna have issues dealing with the new chambers, which might cost you a drone or two, depending on where they're positioned. The castle barricades can be a big problem. You can use them to take out any bulletproof gadgetry that might be inside of the bomb site. So even one of those drones being taken down could completely hinder SSG. Spoiled? <laughs> he pops up, he gets one, but what now? He's gone. Can't escape. It doesn't really attack us are really in those positions. Iconic was in small box. Four is still drawing that same position of service stairs, by the way. But SSG, while they're roam clearing, breaching hatches, getting soft destruction, they're working all the angles right now. When they get towards server, when they get to site, they will more or less be planned ready because they got garage, they got hatches, and they got server control already. SSG encroaching upon this defensive setup. Laid out by M80. Ashen near sighted for a moment. Shoots the F naught, backs away. He's got line of sight over towards red. He also happens to see Kino, peeks out over towards lockers. Citizen continuing the great play that he's had all game so far as Forrest dies. Forrest was last playing over by server. Now it's Jane I know dropping inside a vault. You can hear those F naughts going off. So even though you don't necessarily get a heads up for it, they know you're there and Citizen is happy to greet him. Iconic now attempting the initial defuse Ashen. Trying to do cover, but he's miles away. What? Iconic somehow still pulls this off. Citizen dies to Ashen. Kino was in a different zip code. Now he has to contend with Iconic on those blue stairs. Iconic with the shotgun out. He's going to move in ever oh. closer and drops instead. Surviving for the time oh, being, not before he's shut down by Noodle. Ashen still in this spot. Breaks 100 kills. Kino... Going for the long arm, Ashen running on in. Kino looks to pop off. It'll be a battle to the death. The hard hitting DMR versus the high rate of fire of Kino. He's now pulled out the oh, shotgun. He only had three bullets left. One bullet left, and Kino should be good to get it. Congratulations on 100 kills this stage, Ashen. We'll still take the round. Oh. I mean, the chaos in the round there as well. You can argue that it made it. They could just defuse in the 2v1 because Ashen is so far in garage, but instead that very exciting 1v1. And we got to say, Kino, Laxing said this before the game started. He has been like the big star player. Kino had a rough year last year. You know, he wasn't doing all too hot. This stage, he has been phenomenal. Sure, before that round, he was one and four, but looking at parts, the statistics, his performance, his decision-making, his positioning, finding those important moments, and again, in that particular round, single-handedly winning it as well. 
And again, heartbreak for Space Station. There's been three separate rounds where SSG arguably should have won the round, or at least very likely could have won the round, but ultimately did not. And it started off with Spoiler hiding in open air, going missed or undrawn from Space Station to get that first opening kill. Sure, they trade back Spoiler, it's a one for one trade, not the biggest loss there from Space Station. But the time is running pretty low. They started pushing the bombsite at like 40 ish seconds left. And yeah, the plant goes down, but mostly because MAD weren't in the right positions, didn't have any plant deny to stop it from happening. SSG. It's a long road ahead here on Bank. I do think there is a way where they take us all the distance to maybe overtime even, but they need to fight so hard for each and every single round. Oh, it comes so close. Kino only in one shot left in that shotgun as well. Ashen played it about as perfect as he could. It looked like for a moment where he was inside a garage that it was maybe a bit too far removed from the actual Execute going down from Iconic. Turns out that Ashen was where he needed to be that entire time, and that round loss cannot be thrown upon his shoulders. Round eight, though. Forest on the nook. This is an operator who used to be very highly sought after by these attacking teams. She's fallen off the grid after a number of changes were made to her kit and her loadout. SSG are a very entertaining team, and one of the best things about this particular stage is that we've given given access, Nick. Listen-ins. So why don't we take a couple moments here and listen in to Space Station and see what comms they have for this execute. One down. I'm in, I'm in top square, I'm in top Heard? square. He doesn't know. Looking for this Jan guy. Jan for you. I might drop main nation if you walk up right now. Yo, can you be main nation? I'm gonna double main with you, Dave. Yeah, yeah, I can try to be Pento. Taurus last scene, Dave. Walk main, I'm gonna go drop. Walk main. Yeah. I can, I can drop main sky. Oh, drop. It's it's not, 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 it's yeah, I think archives, archives we, 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 we're not getting in it right now, okay? We're not busting it down. Yeah. I think we look to just, like Mick says, like we just look to find one zone and we crank it, bro. Like, let's like, let's just get the tempo back on our side, you know what I mean? Have these guys shit pants a little bit, all right? Yep. Let's establish, let's get the, so I, I need That's a game doke, and then we just can bounce between. All right. Little bit of chaos. Little bit of uh, hectic there in the call as well. And it kind of shows you like what the players are dealing with in the server when so many things are happening from five different player perspectives. It seems really messy from the outside, but usually most, if not all, players will have a good understanding of exactly what is happening in the rounds. And we heard from SSG very clearly talking about, okay, what they got to do to change this up. They know that this is a long game based on threes. They can go with the vibes, but they got to turn it around, play those power operators, and they said, control the pace of these rounds, bring it back, make it maybe more scared of them. Because I do think there's a kind of lack of disrespect, if you will. And maybe for the first couple of rounds, they were very clearly playing like the MCS, the main character syndrome, where individual players will pop off and steal rounds in Gandhi. Kino did it, Citizen did it, Spot's done it so many times this stage as well. And when you have moments like that happening so many times for Space Station, mentally, you can clock out. They don't seem like it. They understand what's in front of them. They're gonna, of course, fight here for Bang, even going just more rounds, tiring out your opponents, not just flopping over and surrendering Bang is a good look. So the more rounds they can get, the better. The more rounds they can get to like warm up, to figure things out from the side of Space Station, the better they'll be set up for the next map of Consulate. I mean, I, I do appreciate the fact that they've identified that the problem is that they're not playing their style of game. And yeah, I mean, I, I mentioned a couple rounds ago that this is a vibes heavy team and Iconic, you know, spent a great deal of time saying, you know, like, we need to get like, out of our heads. We need to get into our own game. Let's find an area and lock in, I believe is what he said, word for word. Yeah. But I mean, nobody on this team is positive at the moment. Ashen is broken even at 7-7. Seven, seven. That's the best scoreline. Everybody else is underwater. For a team like this, that should not be happening. Same cannot be said for M80, by the way. Citizen's on 15 kills. He has been outstanding. Absolutely sensational so far. Oh. 
Oh, Ashen walks in, gets nearsighted, is picked off by Kino. Boy dies though, so hold on a second. There's still some hope here for Space Station, and J9O picks up two as Noodle falls shortly thereafter. SSG has been very quick to take map control, and this is exactly what was said during that listening on the previous round. It's good to see them action upon it so fast. Yep, they want to control the pace and tempo of that round, and all five players buying into the same system, executing together. I was worried there that Ash was going to just die alone and nothing was going to come out of it, but every other attacker was going to follow up. But look at this, Cameraman's found an angle with the Oryx. He gets shut down, though. Jaina no for a triple, but it still could be around from 80 here. They could clutch it back. I mean, M80's won from this position before, even down numbers. They still look so strong. Bigger problem now, though. Fuser going down. Citizen trying to get back to the bomb site. J9O picks him off. He's been unstoppable this round. He knows the last obstacle. Taking some damage now, and it's Forrest to get the final kill. No ace to be had, but they'll settle with a 4K, and I'm sure far greater is that they won the round. This is a long, long road for them to get back to even, but you gotta win when you can. SSG takes that round. M80 still, though, very much in control. And uh, not just they take the round, but they do it in a way that is a good look for them. I mean, sure, Aka still has bombsite. It's a little bit weaker, et cetera, but it's the play style. It's how that team all can, like, worked out in every single aspect. As I was going to say before, crazy things happened. I thought Ashen walked in alone, being that front aggressive player, be like, okay, guys, I'm going to control this round, right? Gets shotguns to the face. Okay, he's not. But then we flip to the game. We flip to the other players inside of CEO. They're all going in as well. Flying through the windows, full sleep in the charge, finding those picks. Jaina No gets intra kill, gets the flank kill, gets the side kill, just taking out every single player. But again, you cannot rely on one single person to pop off you know, every single round. But the teamwork was there. If Jaina No didn't get the kills, somebody else was in a position to do it instead. And maybe they're going to opt for you know, a more passive bomb site. Go downstairs basement, and they're gonna turtle up more. Play C Force, play Toxic Babes, and force a or sorry, force SSG to now play a slower styled round where they can just go super super crazy. Or can they? They're playing Blitz. This could also be a very quick round on basement, which will be a little bit atypical, but again, it might be the key for SSG success in these rounds. Well, this has already been a quite an exciting first map. Maybe not so much if you're a Space Station fan, but beyond that, it's been a thrilling matchup. I did not expect M80 to be up 6-3 on SSG's map. That certainly does not bode well for the organization that has once won a world championship. Fultz is the only re remaining member of that roster to active players on Space Station. In terms of the organization of Space Station, they've got a very rich and proud history in the NA League and in Rainbow Six Esports. Even before the NA League technically existed, M80 is new. A lot of people see them as that heir apparent to the Xset roster that mm. was around for quite a while. They're looking to make a name for themselves, and M80 is splashed out on what I think is safe to call a super team yet again, composed of zero North Americans, but still <laughs> doing well in North America. The polar opposite of the other team that has no North Americans on it, which is Los, Los. who are now out of the open qualifiers. Not only do they not make playoffs, but the all Brazilian roster is no longer in the open quals either, which means we won't even see them in the LCQs. But boy, oh boy, is this M80 roster it had some question marks at the very beginning of this stage, but they have really picked up the pace. They had an opportunity to finish top two, but Beast Coast had something to say about that. Beast Coast, probably the most surprising roster, surprising story of the NA League so far this stage. They'll be in action oh, yeah. tomorrow. But both of these teams obviously have a lot on the line. Starting to run out of room if you're SSG. Final minute. There go most of those Goyo canisters, so M80 should have to be a bit more active in these gunfights. The fire, though, popped at 43 seconds. So at 23 fire is gone, they can start getting that down at the fuse. So the big question for me is, where is Forrest going to go to Blitz? Because he's not going to be planning by the looks of it. He's going to drop down, create chaos, make space for his team again. He might die, but he's going to buy his team an opportunity to get the defuse down, possibly. 
Forest is very feast or famine on these shield operators, and now more will be there. It needs to be a feast as Fultz dies. What? Pistol comes out. Kino outduels him. M80 winning both of those engagements. A third now to add to it. Iconic breathes some of that gas in. All up to Jane I know to watch for coverage. Eliminate Spoit. Ooh. Another as well. Jane I know with the 4K previously. He's good enough for two. And there goes Iconic. Kino will finish things off and sit on that diffuser. As they take SSG's map, 7-3 the score line. M80 up one nothing, and they'll go to their own map. In a very handsome spot, Nick. Oh, they are, and they look good while doing it. I mean, it was a really good early start from M80, and I certainly think that it helped them kind of get into this, like, strong position. If those first 12 rounds don't just go 1, 2, 3, 4 from the attacks of M80, that could be a very different storyline. SSG, they gotta fix their defenses. Sure, Bang is nothing like Consulate, but if you're struggling on the fundamentals of defense, that's gonna carry over throughout this piece of 3, unless you can fix it. I mean, it's, it's undeniable that Space Station played better on the more favorable side of this map, right? They looked like they were better when they were on the good side, the attacking side of Bank. And with it being their map, maybe the result would have been different if Space Station had the opportunity to start on the better side. But I mean, that's what happens when you pick your own map. The opponents pick a better half. But either way, whether it's, whether it's getting dialed in, whether it's vibes, I'm not sure. But there's a strategic issue right now with SSG, and there's mechanical issues too, Nick. They have to sort that out in the next 15 to 20 minutes, or else their chance of making it deep in the playoffs here is all but gone. That's our first map in the books. M80 takes SSG's map pick, and now M80 will go to Consulate up one nothing. Be back in a few minutes.
Space Station decided going bank against M80 was the perfect way to open up the series. M80 respond with taking four rounds straight and basically win the game at that point because SSG were all over the place. Map one of our first quarterfinal goes to M80, and I think it was more generally a case of M80 just watching SSG implode from within. While we were watching, that was a really tough game to see SSG lose. Like I mean, that. I said this map was going to be a toss-up, but I didn't realize it was going to be an alley-oop from Sploit and Citizen absolutely dunking on SSG. Uh, it was a rough one. I mean, M80 played very, very well. Those first couple of attacks going so smoothly for them. I loved the way they were able to get those picks in the mid-round, Citizen especially, really popping off. It felt like even if Space Station Gaming could win a couple of entry picks, right? You see they got four out of 10. That's not too bad. But even when Space Station were able to get in early on the aggression, punish some of those players who were trying to roam clear, in the mid round, it would still fall apart. They would continue to peak. They would continue to get pun uh, punished. And so it was a rough one from Space Station in that respect for sure. M80 were so, so clean at punishing every little mistake. I mean, yeah, and we talked about SSG as they've been losing on these little mistakes, and there were so many instances that we saw that there were so many little mistakes being yeah. made by SSG that had they just honed in with each other, had they communicated, had they just played the position properly, we could have saw this even closer, maybe a possible OT for that matter. It wasn't just Ashen and SSG playing on characteristic of how we normally see them play. It's that when they had opportunities that they could have taken advantage of, it felt like somebody was out of position, they're not where they're supposed to be, maybe a call's not where it's meant to be. I feel like round four was a pretty good like that just epitomized the problem Space Station had, especially in that first half. Yeah, I mean, for the first couple of rounds, we saw multiple times Space Station Gaming were trying to go for these roam games, trying to get active. And again, even when they were successful, it felt like M80 were really, really struggling. But let's highlight round four in particular. Not struggling, they were doing well. What we saw in round number four, I think, was a great kind of overall example. So this is a top-down POV, and it's a three-man roam from Space Station. And it's supposed to create a triangle where anybody can help anybody else. You've got Ashen, of course, playing inside of the elevator. You've got Faults up top in the in the north playing inside of Tellers. And then in open area, you had J90. Now in this round, M80 have already come through. They've cleared J90. And what's supposed to happen theoretically is you're supposed to see the other two parts of the triangle come in to help him out. But unfortunately, two big things didn't happen, which is what made this round so successful for M80. First of all, Faults up in the north just didn't come down. We didn't see him coming in to help J90. There was no trade at all from him. He played very, very afraid. And then for for Ashen, well, if we play the clip, you'll notice exactly what Ashen's problem was, and that was a uh, cameraman playing inside of the loan office, completely shutting down this rotation. And what I love from cameraman in this round was he played so passive. This is intentional. His job is not to clear Ashen. His job is not to take space on the map. His job is to make sure that these other roamers can't come through and help JNIO, help Faults, while his whole team clears in through office. So I thought that was a great example of a round where, like, there's clearly an idea of how to roam on the side of Space Station but M80 have a very great counter strategy to pinch out these players to make sure those trades can't come through. Yeah, I mean, SSG, they really need to focus together and use that teamwork because you can't be playing scared. I said it when we were watching. This is not the SSG that we're used to seeing. Even Ashen was playing scared. In that moment that we saw, we saw him. He easily could have committed to that camera and took that position. Fultz could have got out, came back around and switched, but Ashen was playing too scared. Fultz was playing too scared. They end up losing the numbers. They end up losing the position. M80 start running away with those rounds. And again, it comes into those small mistakes, whether it's lack of communication, whether it's lack of just commitment to a site, whatever, whatever it is, SSG needs to hone in on where they need to focus on these small, minute points that are hurting them drastically. They took their tag time out after round three when they were already down, so they couldn't use in the, in the second half when things weren't going their way. When you have been in games where you're down 5-2, you're about to be down 6-2, you have an opportunity to kind of recollect yourself. SSG had a, a chance like that, and they didn't take it. So from your POV, what was going on? Yeah, so in round eight, we did hear that listening of iconic talking about the strat, talking about what they want to do. And this round is still being played out. There's still a minute on the board here. We've seen this happen. I've done it multiple times in my career. We're getting absolutely swamped by the other team. There's still a minute on the board. You don't have to commit to this round. Sure, you possibly could win it, make it a 5-3. But if you are absolutely getting smoked on all these fronts, you have to use that 50 seconds. I don't care if you're saving your KD. Forget what Twitch chat says. Use that 50 seconds. Use it as an in-game timeout. You see it all the time. And allow yourself to understand what you guys need to be doing and execute it for the next round and the round going forward. Flip side, for the team that actually won the map, so we don't just talk about the one that hadn't done anything so far on their own pick, Citizen said, bank? 
bet and suddenly popped off 12 and 2 in the first half on attack. If that doesn't happen, then M80 definitely don't have such a dominant first half. Citizen felt like he had superpowers this game. It felt like he always knew exactly where players were going to be and when they were going to swing him. It felt like he was so consistent at, I mean, it's part of this is the drones, right? So consistent at finding those players when they were going through these pushes. You can see he's got those pings for his teammates. I think the droners were super, super important to Citizen's success here, but you can't downplay the flicks. You can't downplay the reaction time. Citizen was so good at knowing where people were going to be on the map and punishing them for those positions. And that's what the, the power of M80 is. There's multiple players on this team. Every single player has the star power to pop off and have big games. And even, yeah, if somebody who is uh, like Cameraman or Kino, maybe not putting up the same numbers, Citizen will. There's always going to be somebody to step up and have that huge game. So I thought Citizen played fantastic today. Well, he definitely played fantastic. And we were talking about the wrong players. We were talking about Ashen. We were talking about Spoy. But the whole True. time, it was Citizen. They Citizen got, took it personally. They got LeBronic on SSG, but we have Michael Jordan on M80. I mean, this, is, I mean this was a clinical performance from Citizen nonetheless. And like you said, I don't even know how he knew where some of these players were. He just hit the pre-fire, and next thing you know, someone's off the board. I would hate to have been in that position of SSG having to go on Citizen when he's performing like this. And I can't even do that on the hollow. He's doing it on hollow. I need the ACOG. I need that yeah. three-time scope, the 2.5. Something about everybody switching back to 4-3 suddenly means Citizen just turns into a monster. <coughs> now we move on. So, map one's already happened. What do we think about map two? Well, like I said, I'm still going to stick with what I was saying, that the first map was going to be a toss-up, but going yep. into that consulate, sure, SSG did lose that 7-5 to M80, but like I said, when you are on that receiving end of that loss, going against a team into a rematch, you tend to take more from that game and understand how you want to go into that next time you replay that. No, I agree 100%. I mean, this is a very strong map for both teams. For Space Station, obviously, they did lose uh, to, to M80 earlier in the season, which is why M80 chose to pick it. But they also played it against Sonics. They won that match. Uh, and both games were very, very close. I believe both 12 rounds. So they've got a lot of experience on this map. It's historically been one that Space Station have favored as well. Does mean a lot of footage, but I mean, it's playoffs. They've had a lot of days off. I'm sure that they've been working on some stuff and have come in with a whole new strap book. My big problem is listening to what SSG were like at the very end of that game. When you hear all of a sudden, every, like, the wind is just out of their sails. There doesn't seem like there's very much momentum in the comms. You lose your first map, and then you try to make the transition, and suddenly you're on your opponent's map pick when you've already lost your own. What do you do to mentally reset? You, you kind of need to do it, but what does it take to actually do it? Well, I mean, these guys made a strong run at SI. I mean, the mm -hmm. biggest thing is, you go into the next game. You wipe the slate. It is what it is. You just take from it. You learn where the struggles were. You learn what the problems were. You learn the things that you need to focus on, and you just completely wipe off that next map and go into this map. Clean slate. Plain and simple. That is the only way to go about that. I also think this was like a pretty predictable pick from M80 because obviously Space Station, everybody knows that M80 beat SSG on this map. So they should have a game plan, yep. right? They should have already talked about this for the last couple of days. This is how we're going to play Consulate. We expect them to pick it. It wasn't the only option for M80, as I said. Maybe they could have gone Clubhouse or something, but it was definitely one of the obvious choices they could have made. So Space Station would have known that this was going to be coming up. They should have known that this is going to be a plan. So I think at this point, you just say, guys, reset, stick to the game plan, stick to what we talked about, whatever that may have been behind the scenes, they should know how they plan on winning this map, and so now they just got to execute it. If my memory serves, like, on that console game from earlier, remember it was the Spoit Lurk downstairs, killed Ash and killed two players down on basement on the very final round that meant it was a 7-5 victory. There were a couple instances of M80 having solo plays that meant that was the reason they won the round in the first place, but you kind of can't rely on that when you already know, yes, just because Space Station's down a map, they're probably going to break something else out because they have to, otherwise it's single alone. No, and it was small mistakes again that we were talking about. It was small mistakes on SSG's end because it was just a jackal track. Had, yep. had Ash just pulled out the jackal, he would have saw Spoit's footprints, and then Spoit would have never got that flank off. The feet again. were there. He yeah. just had to they, use they the were 100 percent there. And then we could have easily have seen it over time, like Ashton was saying. And then it could have been, you know, and an SSG win nonetheless. But like I was saying, when you're a losing team going into a rematch, you do take a lot more from that loss than a winning team is going to take winning it. You aren't going to look at it as drastically as when you're losing it. So you still have to bank. You 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 want Space um, Station to win this thing so bad. I, I well <laughs> specifically for a best of three, I want the best performance from both teams. And what we saw from SSG the last game was not their best performance by any means. So going into this map, I expect the skill ceiling to be way higher than what we just watched. I meant for your prediction, not for the sake of the players. Dream. This is for my prediction. I need them <laughs> to be at the highest yeah. skill ceiling and performing. Desperation finally starting to set in for Laxon because he is currently tied with Jesse, but Fox is still right above them, currently watching this M80 performance, thinking, yeah, I had this entire thing planned from the start. And map number two is up on deck. Parker and Pengu, have fun. 
Well, I intend to have fun, Jacob, but will Space Station? Because I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that in map number one, they probably didn't have a lot of fun. And honestly, fun is half of the battle. The other half of the battle, winning. And SSG didn't do that either. So over two on the matchup, unsuccessful battle, but there's something bigger than a battle called the war. I don't know if you've heard this phrase before, but you might've won the battle, but we won the war. Yep. SSG now needs to eventually do a reverse sweep and they're gonna do it, if they're gonna do it, starting on M80's map. You know, it could be worse, could be a best of five where you gotta win more maps to make the comeback happen. You know, it's, you know, not the worst case scenario, but you're right, it's a, it's a long run ahead for SSG, not just as like winning the first map and the second, but those individually, individual rounds on bank look brutal. It was like, guys, we know that we're kind of done. We're only halfway through the round. We gotta play it out. It's 2v4. Can we just please get a clutch? No, okay, we lose anyway, whatever. It was tough. Social prediction, favorite M80 to start map number one. It's only gone in that direction ever since. As you see, the very top of your screen, there is a red diamond. Next to M80's Ooh. logo, you will see that underneath it, there is a black diamond, as there are two black diamonds to the left of Space Station. They're not actually that color. And I can already hear the black and white actually aren't technically colors, people in the chat, but they're just not filled in. M80 having that <laughs> red diamond next to their name means that they won map number one. As you can see also, just in case you're a little confused to the right of it, it says, done, M80, 7-3 over True. top of an image of bank you know okay. what that means that means that m81 bank 73 just want to get ahead of the people that invariably ask in chat who won map number one well now there's two ways for you to tell who did that well i have a follow-up question if you're like a twitch viewer so why did m80 pick both bank and consulate because top right there's an immediate immediate local twice parker how do you spend that one well, so M80 might have won map number 173, but the reason why their logo is shown a second time is because we are on their map. So mm. the logo that you see on map number one is not who picked it, Nick. Oh, it's really? Who, it's who won. Yeah, we're learning today, aren't we? We, okay. are, we? we are learning together, just like you have unlearned how to pronounce the word repel. Repel, yeah. You did such a, you look, you did a great, you did a great job last week. Thank you. You know, I, I, what? And then what? Sorry. And and, then, and yeah, now you've been saying Rapple again. You know what? You know what the issue is? I started playing ranked in between last oh. week and this week. That's the issue. Yeah. I don't know how to tell you this, Nick, but playing Rainbow Six ranked is always the issue. I don't know. <laughs> to all of life's problems, right? <laughs> to all of life's problems. Are you having a bad day? Play Rainbow Six ranked to make it worse. Uh, hmm. Damn. Two in particular. There. As, as an aside. As an aside. Obviously, there's been a fair bit of fanfare on social media about rising player counts and, you know, this, the changes that have been made, and not just those that have actually been made, but those that are coming down the pipeline, obviously Fenrir changes, Solus changes, etc. Game is in one of the best states I've played yes. it. Yes. It is very enjoyable playing this game, and, and I mean, I think, it's, I think it's fine to take breaks from time to time. You can get frustrated, you can get kind of burnt out. I definitely have been burnt out on this game previously. But right here, right now, it's a very fun game to play. So for me, ranked is actually not the problem. Okay, so it's me problem essentially now. Oh, I'll no. work on That's that. Not I, That's not what I meant. I'll work on it. I'll do better. And hopefully, as well as SSG, because the maybe they're keeping the same pace. They're quitting the building. And this is gonna be a classic CO take, right? Box below to shred the floor, fire in, raffle in, get the plant down, toxic babe, jump out, stick it. Yep. <laughs> Just as the doctor ordered. You gotta wait for the smoke. Rapple in again. Second fire. Toxic babe. Jump out again. Rapple in again. Last toxic babe. Jump out. No more smokes. Plan goes down. But the cover has to be there. Also, C4 from Folds Clash on Forest. They have multiple ways to retake. And actually, there, they used the Toxic Babe too early. Nobody from Mady rappled in. They have a wasted one. But they might have changed their entire attack here. They're rotating. They have given up the CEO approach. But I mean, Ashen's already used two of those Toxic Babes. A minute off of the clock. Nitro still, Nitro Cell still remains in pocket for J90 as well as for Fultz. But you didn't lose too much on that opening gambit from M80. M80 losing a lot of HP in the process. 
Citizen and Kino equal one player combined. So Citizen will die to one or two bullets of pretty much every gun and will certainly die to one bullet of any shotgun at this HP. The way that Citizen played in map number one, you need another strong game for him as it's what helped put that match into the winner's column for his team. Oh no. Oh no. Iconic gets spotted out and picked off by Sploit on Repel. Now, it's Forrest walking up. Survey a similar part of Admin, but he spies a drone. E1D keeps him in place. Citizen down below on the lurk. Oh, they're back where they started. They're going to go again. <laughs> well, I mean, if you baited utility, why not? And there's Kino now attempting the plant. Last toxic babe goes out. Kino out of that position. Now it's all up to the nitro cells. Bolts runs right by the window. Spoit with two kills. A third now. Cameraman to go on in. Pistol out. J9 no damaged. The last one standing is the Clash of Forest. Over towards the window, sidearm in play, diffuser down, but has not been planted. Force is actually sitting on it. Mag dumping into the players of M80 down below, but Citizen will get the job done, and M80, their winning ways in map one, well, they perfectly translate to their winning ways on map two as they go up one nothing. That is a strategical masterclass for sure this time from MIDI though, because they absolutely outplayed SGC's defense. <clears throat> they do the classical, they're gonna mini execute, Fire, flashbangs, rappel in, expecting a toxic babe answer from the smoke. They jump out. Second toxic babe goes out now. They've burned two out of three. Then they rotate to admin. They get the pick. Guess what? They go back to where they started CEO. But this time, they don't showcase that they're doing it. No fire, no, no flashbang grenades. Just straight in. And then we see a toxic babe and a C4. Bit of panic from SSG. And even if it made it didn't then find the kill shortly after, they had one final capital fire, they had one final flashbang, and they had two smokes and capital as well. They had every single piece of utility that they need to execute. And because Sport on Buck was already in piano in the beginning of the round, all the vertical holes to the bomb side, they were already there. So they rotated twice and they got value every single time. The clash completely ineffective there from SSG. Yeah, you know, you get two kills, but they're entirely and completely impactless. The round is over. It doesn't matter. We didn't really get to see anything play out there. And again, it's SSG. They show us a strategy. Maybe they do not care. They'll bulldoze over it, through it, around it. It doesn't matter, but they will find a way and make it irrelevant. Well, if you just want to go and look at the map stats for Consulate, it was tied with Bank in fourth place for most plays. Both maps have been played four times prior to today. Bank just got played, so it's up to five. Same with Consulate, now also at five plays. It's a very different landscape for this map. 62% of all rounds won prior to round number one, I should say, were won hmm. by the defenders. And every single bomb site on this map has either an even or a positive win rate for the defenders. There is not a single attacker-sided bomb site on this map. The closest, CEO and meeting, which is that upstairs bomb site that you just witnessed, is 50-50 through the 12 times it's been played. Everywhere else, you expect the defenders to win, especially on this downstairs bomb site, which sits at, <clears throat> hold on a second, let me prepare myself, a 69% win rate for the defenders. <laughs> nice. Hostile detected. Oh boy. Well, it's a good place to be then. But again, we all know that, yeah, stats say one thing, but execution and how you play it out is another. I like this top floor roam here from SSG, though. Denying the breach in Visa from Admin. Ashen on Solus knows there are no cams watching him, but he gets baited out. They open the window, they go again, he falls back, and they surrender that hatch position. But it is a very slow progress here from M80. Last time they found the opening pick, Iconic fell first, he C4s, lack of intel here. They have no idea on the defense what's going on. Not one bit. Fultz has now died to Kino's advances. Spoit inching up closer to that position that Iconic held on Spiral. Now he's anticipating somebody from M80 to cross his path. Cameraman dies to Ashen. Also playing on this first floor, not that far removed from Visa, tucked in next to the vending machine. Two more silhouettes in position, but Ashen will get away. M80 just not quick enough to isolate that Solus and punish him from that spot. Excellent start by Ashen to get rid of Cameraman. 
It's no more hard breach either, as the thermite of Kino is out of exothermic charges. You better hope what needs to be opened up's been opened up. Final 30 seconds now. Noodle barely surviving a scare. Bees to go off, EMPs as well as M80. What's at the back of this bomb site? It will do that. Is Noodle still opening things up? Citizen looks to be taking some minor damage. Down goes Kino. Citizen on the board for this round. 10 seconds left. M80 breaching in. I need to grab that diffuser. Boy gets it in the nick of time, but falls off because they don't have upstairs coverage. Citizen with one kill, but SSG will double up. Spoiled all alone against J90. He's halfway there. And I know has spam pings oh. and stops Spoit in his tracks. Already a better start to this map for Space Station. Oh man, that is close. If it made it just have, you know, five more seconds in that round, if only the player with the fuser didn't die outside the breach. Those are the questions you're going to be asking yourself, guys. What if? But for Space Station, they'll take it. And they had a good understanding and a good read in that round. They had those red pings. They had the intel. They had verticality the entire time because they didn't do a full map roam clear. That's the big question you can ask yourself in attack. Hey, are we going to spend two and a half minutes clearing top floor, first floor, breaking apart the soft floor, and then going bomb site? Or will you go for more direct approach like we saw? Walk down the into like server archives, attack the bomb site from behind, and then hope that it works out. Well, it almost did. But again, SSG actually fighting back. They need to do this. Unbanked, they were so happy to give up map control, not seek out those engagements. And we're finally seeing them effectively roaming together with the players looking for engagements rather than looking to hide away, avoiding that conflict. Well, that bomb site, like we said, was so overwhelmingly defender-sided in the numbers that it doesn't really come as a surprise that Space Station was able to persevere. But I say persevere because there were periods of time where it didn't look great for them. And right at the very end of that round, after things looked fantastic for them, it all falls apart because of an inhuman action by Spoit. Either way, Space Station can now tie the match up, and they are desperate to start winning rounds. It wasn't exactly the result on their own map of bank that they wanted, so if you want to win, you got to go through Consulate first and then over to Skyscraper on Tiebreaker. <laughs> SSG are starting on the better side. There's no disputing that. So if SSG can easily win this next round, they'll be in good shape. But you're looking at a 4-2 score line for SSG to really have performed well on this side of the map. In a slower pace here from Mady, playing Twitch and Bravo. So, the during has to be done. Hack those gadgets, default cams. And just take Intel away from the side of Space Station. The one issue is that they're always going to have reliable Intel with Force playing the Solus operator. You can see where the drones are, what cams are up, what cams aren't. And just see if any players from Mady are droning in positions that are punishable by verticality or jump out. But I like this kind of in-the-building approach that Emedi showed us on Bank as well as Consulate. They just send one or two players in, and they do like, you know, the rat gameplay. They're just walking around no drone, looking for player positions, looking to find a gap they can exploit. While that's happening, Emedi are progressing elsewhere, but they're all working to the same goal. Lobby-sided attack in towards the bomb side, and when we had Noodle downstairs on bottom spiral, he's assisting Spoil by being in a position by closing the gap on the attack inside. Emedi, they have a very clear area of the map that they care about right now, the question is, though, how do they deal with the bomb site? Warden can see through the smoke. Um, Solus can see what they're planting, for example. And you got those toxic bits in action as well. So once they get into the site itself, there's no real oh. easy plant position. I don't know what Forrest was doing, but that's a bit of an Stay. early death. Iconic, though, now watching the bomb site, ensuring it stays in the hands of SSG. Citizen dies to ash in. Space Station lost a man early. They get it right back. Noodle now taking damage as Spoit looks for his own opening. Kino shrugging off a lot of damage. Ashen's been dropped. A reload from Kino as the last Toxic Babe will linger unless Ashen can be picked back up. And sure enough, a station close enough to get their teammate back from the dead. Now it's Spoit taking quite the beating. These are chaotic rounds. First map was chaotic. We're in the same spot now, and it's the smoke! The Warden of J90 sees right through it. Kino dies. Look at Spoid and Noodle's HP. This is so winnable for Space Station. But just as I say that, 
One HP is all you need. One HP and five bullets can win you a round. Oh. It was a 3v3, and M80 finished the round in a 3vO. Large part, the cameraman's heroics. The, the lead goes back into the column of M80. Again, that round could be so much cleaner from M80 if one thing changes. The person with the fuser doesn't die in an awkward position. This time a citizen, playing ace, died on the piano hallway right next to both the smoke and warden from SSG. And it's a bit of a struggle, you know, who's gonna put the fuser, who's gonna plant the multiple attackers were low on HP. But again, it made the problem solved. They recognize, hey, planting in a three versus one with players low on health with only eight seconds left. If one thing goes wrong, we lose the round. There's not enough time. They get off the plant and they all three swing that final defender and they seek out the gunfight instead and overpower it. It's really quick, simple problem solving, but it just shows that maybe they're not panicking. Because if you're panicking, you're gonna just hold F on your keyboard, plant the fuser, and hope that the cover is there. They are practicing, guys, this is not safe. Let's go for kills. And you can see it. It take a while to set up in the attack, but that's expected. This is console. It's a very difficult map to attack. It's, it's large in size. You have three different floors, all that have relevance every single round. And if you can't find a gap, which you may have been very good at, into brute force. Into a door, into a window, into a soft wall, and just hit that bomb side and win out in the engagements themselves. Force, keep that same place out of bank, jumping out a window, so you can spawn peak, gets denied though. Takes a little bit of damage, nothing too poorly here. I really like the Amaru play of Kino. I'm excited to see what transpires. times when you see an Amaru pop up and you can kind of take a deep sigh and go, oh, this is not going to work well. But for M80, I feel like they translate quite well on these Amaru plays. Yeah. Yeah, if one guy can do it, it's Kino, I feel like. Lots of drones now from M80. Four operators on attack that all have access to drones as their secondary gadget. Down goes Noodle, the Capital. Removed from action, Kino slingshotting into admin. Down goes Forest. This one could be quite quick, so why don't we take a second here, brace ourselves for an M80 listening. One bitch, one bitch, one bitch. Bitch dead. Nice. Get the one guy. One yellow, one yellow. We're gonna flip now. One, 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 that's for you, Willie. You leave. Hey, in bitch, in bitch. No, close. Just leave, guys. Come from below. Come from below, Kiki. I'm, 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 I'm not gonna play I'm just making for it. I'm on yeah, yeah, the Just play safe, Ben. Just play safe. He can win. Oh, the, uh, Oscar, 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 Kiki, Oscar. Uh, 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 uh go inside, go inside. Nice! Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. I, I'm curious if they're given notice that they're going to be listened into. I don't know the procedure or if we can just tap into their comms at any point, but quite the gesture from Citizen. That's yet another round in the win column. And boy, oh boy, what did we say? It was a 4-2 that SSG was looking for on defense. Well, they're not going to get it. The best that they can muster is a 3-3 first half which is behind the numbers that you see on this map. If you on defense are not winning at least three to four rounds, you are in trouble. Four is really the gold standard. SSG will call their timeout, and they are not having the best day today so far. They're not, and it comes down to, again, like, it maybe they're, they're, they're just better today. They really are, like, they are showing up so much more than SSG, and in terms of, like, creativity, execution, team play, individual gun skill, and also the communication from an AD, it's very, it's very like, it fluctuates. During the execute, very hectic, chaotic, a lot of calls happening, cameraman like taking very clear charge and control. The second they start planting, we hear Kino go, guys, I'm planting, please hold me, right? Silence for a little bit, the moment the future goes down, it's like, guys, play it safe, one guy's playing vertical below, and then the last big can play inside of admin and just swing the door. So they have it set up. There was one small issue that occurred though. Nobody was holding the drone 
at the right time for me. So they did lose a player downstairs playing the verticality because that missed timing. Likely because if cameraman's gonna call the shots, he's more like to like watch the player perspectives and the drones to see what's happening and try and orchestrate things for that post plant. But regardless, if you're a citizen left alive or a Spartan for that matter in a 1v1, they very often win those. So not a bad spot at all. Both of those two players, six kills each, tied for first kills on the side of a matey. Big difference in the comms as well between the two. Are heading out to the you listen to SSG in the previous map and they weren't quite hectic. It didn't feel like there was any kind of, I don't want to say energy, but you know what I'm saying. Flow. It's like off a of flow, I think. It, yeah, but then you listen to M80 and it sounds like they're in the trenches. And I mean, they are. You're, <laughs> you're, you're playing for your life. You're playing for a spot at the major. Of course it's going to be hectic. Of course it's going to be frantic. Can't hide from me. It's a big difference. Uh, it's still quite well structured. I love, I love the inside, just like how different teams communicate. And also, we don't always know which players are actually talking and what kind of stuff they're calling for. Like, we often see teams where it's the... The support player, for example, yeah, cameraman saying, hey, Kino, go plan, guys, you cover. But Kino himself took charge of that situation. There's still, like, individual decisions from the MAD being made here. But look at this, SSG. They're still looking alive. Get opening pick. Active roaming. Got the insult again. Vertically from Ashen. Looking to make proactive plays. And there's still two minutes to go. They're in a great position in this round. Ashen still roaming, but... Forest dies, the smoke, the first one off the board for SSG. That is a troubling sign. Still half of the round to go, and there will be no toxic gas to blanket that site. Seen previously how effective that operator can be against M80, especially with how objective-focused M80 has been. A team that is, well, I don't want to say not known for objective play, but with the gunners on the side of M80, they can easily kill everybody on most of these teams. Their insistence on getting that diffuser down has been to great success so far. And the job just got a lot easier. Oh. with fire. That deployment was quite nice, actually. Over the softball. Play a good gun Ooh. behind it. It's Jane. I know he's having a great time so far. He gets to kill the sport. Jane, I know, has been by far and away the best player for SSG so far today. There's time for other people to get on the board. Fultz has yet to find a kill here in this map. Ash and roaming as well. M80 can now get ever closer to the bomb site. Oh. This is just hastiness from M80 in the wrong direction. Fultz gets on the board. Kino picks him off. Noodle in a safe spot to get the diffuser down. Hold on a second. I don't think there's a way to stop Noodle here unless what? there's a flank. How did M80 find this opening? Noodle takes some damage, pops up, gets the job done on his own. J90 dies. Noodle still expecting one over towards hallway. He goes goodbye to Ashen. Now it's all up to Kino, who sprints out. He needs to play time. 30 seconds left. Ashen, moments away from getting onto that diffuser. It appears there's a drone somewhere nearby. Kino, a flash. Ashen is sticking it. You need to swing <gasps> Kino. Oh! And his times it by half a second. Ashen does not fake. And a round that could have easily been won by either team goes in the column of Space Station. <laughs> Again, SSG might not win all that many rounds today so far, but the ones they do are intense. It is chaotic. It is messy. And for one of the rare times here, M80, they are in such a strong position after being in a very weak one before the plant goes down and they actually lose it out. And the smart play there from Space Station, stick to the fuse. Kino's outside, there was no drones on the attack watching the counter defuse, and that's the strength of Solus. Put on the scanner, check your environments. If you don't see a single drone, hold F. Kino has to like, gamble the 50-50. And Kino was so low on HP, he had no choice to go for a flashbang, see if you stock it, then go for the swing. Kino made the safe play there. It's a smart thing to do, but you gamble that pro stone fake or do pro fake situation. And if you guess incorrect on that 50 50 decision, you will likely lose the round. There isn't time for both. I'm surprised Kino didn't just stay outside the Maverick Breach to cover his team a little bit more, a little bit longer, perhaps. But I also know Kino is afraid of if he's stuck on the breach and they start defusing, he doesn't have time to sprint in for seven seconds. So, fair game to him. SSG, they get the second round. They really need this third round on defense. It's been the same. You two upstairs hold this all before. 
they have to be able to counter that CEO take if it made the approach it again. This time though, there is no Capitao in play. It's Grim instead on Noodle. So it could be a different approach, but given that, that Kino has a shotgun, very likely he walks up yellow stairs. And that's exactly what he's doing. Droned all the way up. Going quite quickly. Barbed wire will be a bit of an issue. A hindrance slows him. The idea is for there to be some element of surprise. A grenade now tossed in, presumably from Skylight. You know, we'll rely on the information now from the drones, and oh my, the first point of contact is going to be a clash. The one operator that can stop the shotgun in its tracks. He now realizes the only way is to rush up. He's not going to be able to get close to that clash. That's a shutdown. You got to now go to plan B, matey. You cannot do yellow stairs take. You cannot go CO necessarily unless they brute force. That's the other option on concert, right? If it doesn't work the way you intend to, you can always just force it and see what happens instead, but it's going to get a little bit bloody. You got to win on those individual fights. Kino is still sticking around. They're still going to try for this, it looks like. Looks like. Completely blind as Forrest is in this spot. He has no idea what's coming. He knows actually just sprinted right by him. He's completely bypassed the clash. Now long range. This will be a battle to the death, and he's got the shots lined up. It's won, though, by Ash in his own SMG 11 in hand. Boy doing some serious work. Citizen down below. Cameraman dies. It's Noodle Spoyd and Citizen remaining for an 80. Ashen Iconic and Jane I know the lineup for Space Station. No toxic babes remaining for Ashen Smoke. One Nitro Cell in the hands of Jane I know. That's all you're really looking at at the moment for plant denial. The fact that M80's been able to bait these smokes out so effectively on the window. Quite good for their timing. Oh, Ashen. No, no. Crucial round and Ashen is picked off from the bathroom window. Now it's Noodle attempting the plants. A swing and a miss. Iconic wins the duel. Now it's all up to Citizen as they double Ooh. swing and he gets them both. Big Ben is quite the sight to behold. First half in the books, 4 2 for M80. Oh, man, Citizen map one of Bank, phenomenal. Citizen map two doing the exact same thing again. That is the victory or the success part here for M80. Now we have a call in with our great analyst, Jesse, who gets to talk to us a little bit about what we saw in those first six rounds. Okay. That's indeed where I'll be talking to you about Parker. And in fact, I specifically wanted to join you from the North American League couch to talk to you about Big Ben himself because Citizen has not <laughs> only been having a fantastic day today, he also was a key player the last time these two teams matched up against each other. Obviously, earlier through the group stage, Space Station M80 faced off on Consulate. That game also started with M80 on the attack. When M80 moved to defense, Citizen was the best player going 7-3 and three through the six defensive rounds, starting Starting off with back-to-back -back 3Ks defending on Consulate. The key thing for me was Citizen's ability to roam out aggressively on the map, delay a bunch of time, and then rotate back to the bomb site also finding impact on the site execution. So Citizen has a fantastic day so far today. He loves this map of, map of Consulate. He has played very well on this map, particularly on the defense, particularly against Space Station. So if I was SSG right now, I would be very, very concerned about shutting this guy down because he seems unstoppable at the moment. Well, so, thank, you very, mm. thank you very much, Jesse. Nick, what are your immediate thoughts? I was going to ask Jesse, you know, let's talk about, you know, Citizen now, Spartan the intro segment, and, you know, and then we, they spoke about Ashen, but, like, he's not really been that, you know, that, you know, pressed in the server. I was going to ask Jesse, so that, does, does that mean that EU is back on top? Is that what's happening right now? Oh, EU right, players right, are taking wrong. over the NL right now in front of our very eyes. Look at this. Citizen 8-3, Sport 9-4. and four. But I do agree with Jesse. I think it's a matter of shutting down, quote-unquote, star players. And the thing is, they haven't been. It took SSG, I mean, they didn't even do it. On, I was gonna say it took them like almost every single round possible to do it on bank, but they never shut down Citizen. Like they would kill him in a couple of rounds, sure, but Citizen was never looking like, oh, I can't make a play. I can't go in the building. I can't take these gunfights. No, no. Every single round, M80, they are quick in the building. They're not afraid to take map control. They never look scared. And when we heard that listening earlier as well, they were like, guys, we got a fight out on the bomb site, and they were just going for it. And I think what they're doing really well, Spark kind of spoke about it in the uh, player injury before the matchup. They have good synergy. 
Like Noodle, Citizen, and Sport, they know each other from way back in the day. Sport has played with Kine before. They got that connection there as well, that, that link. The only kind of like outsider, if you will, is Cameraman. And he's your IGL who's just calling the shots. And you often see the four players that are friends, if you will, playing together. Cameraman is on the outside of the map, baiting for them, setting things up, calling the shots in support of operators at those global gadgets like Lion and Dokubi. And it works really well for the squad. It feels like every single player has an identity and a purpose in every single round. And that's really been, I think, the key to them doing so well in this stage. Well, Good night. Folks seem to be a little bit surprised by Citizen, who is close to breaking double digits again. I believe he finished the first game with 15 kills, now sits at nine through this contest for what would effectively be 24. Quick maps. He started the day with 69 kills. So he's very mm. close to breaking 100 as well. Spoit already broke it under before we got into this matchup. Ashen broke it in the previous map, but is now just adding to the tally. Everybody else is quite a ways back. Most of these players in the league are sitting somewhere between 60 to 70-ish kills. Ashen and Spoit have really been the two outliers so far through all of our matches. Halfway point now of round number seven, and M80 on the favorable side, what damage can they do? The big thing is the pace from SST. I mean, they're slow in the building. When they finally do get in, the falls on Jackal of all operators, just get swung, dies, bang. The Dutch Jackal goes down, the roam clear slows down too. You can just scan out any remaining roamers. You gotta join every inch of the map. And now, time is running low. What do you have? Capcom traps. Go your canisters. If you go too quickly here, you might get taken down just by utility alone. It's a minute left. They've just broken the piano soft floor, popping on score canisters, making decent progress. But as you see, they're gonna be forced into a 3 2 1 execute way before they might be ready for it. But they keep losing gunfights. Ashen also falls. Citizen with two kills in this round. Citizen's just all over the map. Not only are you going to have some difficulties roam clearing, but you're also going to have to deal with a formidable player now breaking double digits and just having Conflict be his entire playground. And I know we'll be familiar with that angle. That's exactly where he got the pick from previously. You know, eliminating Iconic and well, SSG don't really have much going. Final 20 seconds, Forrest pulling out the sidearm. I think that might be it for this round. Point also Hunt breaking him. double digits, by the way. Get the kill. How much? Most on SSG. Ashen. Oh my. Ah. It's a pretty good pistol when you think about it. <laughs> it is. What is it? The, the 45 Musuck, or something like that, isn't it? I, I'm not a gun guy. Neither of us are <laughs> from. A, neither of us are from. We're not gun people. So neither of us are from countries that much care about guns. It is an M45 Musuck. I Google double checked. That's very important right. that you get that detail right on this broadcast. Thank you for. Do you, do you know what the other pistol is? Oh wait, Fermo doesn't have that. He's scra wait, what's Thermo say? Does he have the five seven? He I does. He has. He has that gun that has like thirty bullets in it or whatever it is. Twenty one, I think it is. But yeah, yeah it's a ridiculous yeah. amount of bullets. You know, I remember watching a Macy J video way back when I first started playing. And mm -hmm. everybody ran with the sidearm that he was just using right there. The forest was just using because it does more damage as far as I'm aware. But obviously, I think there's only like eight bullets or something like that in it. Yeah. But then Macy was like, no, no, you have to run with the other one because you don't have to reload. And the damage difference is so negligible that the more bullets you have, the higher likelihood of you hitting a headshot. And I was like, yeah. that, map, that map adds up, you know? <laughs> so I decided to do that. That was way back in, that would have been sometime in 2017. Oh boy. I don't know. We are so old. Games change so much as well. I mean, I mean, of course, like, the pistols have stayed the same mostly, but the pistol recoil, the visual recoil kick, oh my god, back in the day. Pistols, pistols were hard were unusable. to use. <laughs> unusable. Unusable. <laughs> it was rough. Oh. Uh, there's a lot of funny things. Like we had like the raptor leg situation for a bit. That was a big like loved meme in the community that people go, give us raptor legs back, where if it was in the final kill cam, people's legs would be reverted backwards. She looked like a raptor with like really long legs. It was hilarious. It was there for a few months. It Your knees bend the other way. Yep. Yep. Yeah. You look exactly like that. what are they? The ATATs or whatever they're called. Oh from, yeah, yeah. From, from Star Wars. Wars. Yeah. Yeah. The small ones, the bipods, not the not the big not boys. The, the, yeah, not the big boys. So, 
That's anyway. exactly it. This is a this is a perfect time, I think, for us to take yet another listen in. So it roughly about 20 seconds or so. I want to hear what SSG is thinking because they're in a very similar position where they were on bank. I have to imagine that morale on SSG is probably a little bit down, especially given the fact that M80 are on the better side. Now, obviously we can't glean too much from these call-ins. Why don't we take some time? Maybe, either way, let's listen in. That round was very quick. It's still going. What's SSG saying? I think left yellow side. Look, look, let's kill CO guys. Let's kill CO guys. Let's please. Right here. Are you ready? Sword drone, Jay. Sword drone. Yeah, I'm walking. Dave, Dave's a pro. I saw the pro. Bird. I'm repelling you. Ready? Ready? Could be ready? Combo. Could be combo. Yeah, I'm yeah, walking around. Let's get it. I'm repelling you. I'm repelling you. Three, two, two one. Just check, check combo. I think they're below right now. Here. All right, listen, listen. They're, they're going to play for the lower hard zone and the hoary hard zone. I think we go fast. I think we just do a... Can you get the hatch right now? Yeah, we go fast. Look for traps. Look for traps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm gonna hop stool. I'm gonna hop stool. He's playing low, low, low. He's gonna try to rotate top when we get when we go to the left side here. Do you want me to stay top then? Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. I'll, I'll walk back up top. I'll walk back up top right now. I'm hopping. One dead man. One dead man. Yeah, lobby, lobby. Two, 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 Attackers Fire spiral, they can only flank yellow. I, I, I probably just flank. <laughs> On it. Two. Three. <laughs> I'm I'm try. Try. We're good, we're good. What did he no. hit? The beam. The metal beam in the floor. It looked like he was logged in. Yeah. He fired a couple times and that was just, that was memo, that was, that was muscle memory right there. He took a couple shots. He thought it was over. He started to run away, but he hadn't actually hit the target. And an unfortunate blunder from SSG has them on the ropes. M80, a single round away from advancing to a date with Destiny tomorrow. And by the way, Destiny's name, Oxygen. I will say though, very efficient, like 60 seconds, Mrs. G. Top floor clear, but a cannon to clean the jammer, joining oh, side, getting into, rotating down the other stairs, getting two picks, getting down the fuse, when they call, they're gonna come up, run up you. If anything, spiral, we have a cam on yellow. And then they realize both players are on side, they're counting the takes on the counter defuse. And then, yeah, he flakes the floor, thinks he kills the guy, you know, defusing, looks away, thinking the round is basically one, but no. Very, 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 very unfortunate because HG did such a good job of clawing it back, being down a player and having like, it looked like almost no way back into that bomb instead of back into that round. That's the immediate effect today, it seems like. They just seem to find kills out of nowhere, both went ahead and went behind and it has this like snowball effect essentially. I will say one thing, I think it was Forrest who said it, the moment that they missed the shot and HG lost the round, they said all good, don't worry about it. Very quickly, like the mentors in check. Don't even give your teammates a second to be like, ah oh, man, shoulda, coulda, woulda. You know, like, no, don't worry about it, all good. Go next. Despite this being the possible final map because they lost bank already, the fact that they're still having that mentality speaks to the overall fundamentals, obviously, as a team, when it comes to just staying in it. Oh man, not exactly what you wanted to see from these two teams. I don't have a dog in this fight, so for me, I don't particularly care which team moves on. I feel like it's a very familiar refrain that I have to say this, is that I just want a good match. And so far, it's been a great match if you're a fan of M80. It has certainly not been a competitive game. Only five rounds through these two maps for SSG so far, but hold on. SSG seems to be fired up in this round. Ash and Folds, Chain, I know everybody coming alive. Team Ace unavailable. Spoil last one standing. Forrest drops on him. I think Iconic was the only player held off of the scoreboard there. A much needed round for Space Station. They are fighting for their lives in the playoffs. And ultimately, an impressive round to keep themselves in this.
And then, you know, you look at last round how close it was. And then now, just like flawless in the building. Roam clear on site, shut it down, and just find all those five kills. If that previous round didn't go the way that it did, then, you know, four or five scoreline would be here instead. But it's 6 3. And it made it, you know, they can just go through the motions right now. Trying to play split bombs at lose. Okay, they go basement. Lose basement. Okay, they go top floor. Okay, lose that. They go lobby. And then it's overtime if they lose that one. They have so many options here. SSG, they did the same thing on bank where they're struggling for a couple of times or a couple of rounds rather on the attacking side. Then they switch it up. They go for a fast attack. Because when they played bank, it was like the first two, I think, attacking rounds. Pretty slow. Didn't go so well. Third time, they just flew in the building. It was the best look we saw from them. So I want to see Steve, if they can, you know, keep it up. Keep up the pace. That's like fast cutting play style. Catch me by surprise. It has been working out. It's hard to do though. And it's again, it's high risk. When you're down on match point, that risk assessment. Oh guys, we might lose if I don't win this gunfight. Oh guys, if I find this window, we might lose. It makes it harder to play operators like the Amaru to play that quick kind of play style. Instead, they play heavy intel. Bill could be Jackal for Worm Clear. Flores Bucks Thermite for the bomb site. They want to be prepared for both scenarios here, and they know maybe last time they like to run around, make it difficult, stall for time. And it's crucial this time that Foles doesn't die in the first minute because that's what happened previously, and that's why the room clear was so slow. All right, we're trying desperately to get those bandit wires off of the door and garage door, of course. It's technically a wall, I suppose, in this training yeah. simulation because that's all Rainbow Six is. It's a trick simulation. Damn. It's the final Rotero drone being driven in by Iconic. Ashen, by the way, has been downed, and I don't think they're going to attempt to get those banded batteries. Citizen, the first actual casualty because Ashen continues to bleed out. He'll be retrieved, so the numbers actually benefit SSG. And they can hack the cams too. There's no Valkyrie in play or something like that, and... There is a bulletproof though. Of course, default cameras are flank watch for Jaron to like do the vertical destruction here. But again, look at the pace. 138. Reload. They're top floor, but they're taking first floor control at the same time with the verticality right now. Jackal scan came out. They saw the final roamer. He's gonna be forced to run away as well to the basement. So this is a very good look with that. Every time SSG they get something good going for them, someone swings out. This time it's noodle. Last time it was citizen. They're back to a 4v4. They hacked the cams already, thankfully, I believe. So that value has been gained. And the final look at the call will not come into action before that bomb site execute. Ashen was flirting with death for a while, and finally they decided to go home with one another. Maybe not the way that Ashen wanted, of course. Rosh can now be opened up as well. Ooh, denied, I believe. I couldn't tell from the sound, nope. and yeah. No, that was a beautifully thrown impact. Second opportunity, and it's good to go. Think about how much SSG had to use just to get that one panel open. All those Rotero drones, the exothermic charge, entry on the other side of the map. You know, we'll hit that Goyo canister now with 35 seconds remaining. J90 trying to hit the site from the back. Unsuccessful. He dies, advantage goes back to M80. Looking to advance through the playoffs for a chance to go to the Manchester Major. M80 have just about gotten it done. All they need is the head of one world champion on their wall and they will get it. Fultz dies, M80, 2-0 over Space Station. Their run, their chance of going to the Major lives on as for SSG. There's no mulligans, no do-overs. That's it for SSG shot in the playoffs. They'll have to fight their way through the last chance qualifiers in hopes of being the fourth team to represent this region. But for today, it's M80 moving on. I mean, is it a big surprise? Not necessarily. M80 has been a better team throughout so far in stage one. But I think how the rounds played out and the fact it was a, a, a quick 2-0, I would say, it is a surprise. I was expecting a 2-1 victory from M80. I see they fight back, they get their own map pick. That third map decider, ooh, exciting. No. SSG, no flat, M80, they came into prep work and also the performance to show for it. Yeah, I mean, I honestly thought that the, the third map would be not just the tiebreaker for the series, but I think it would be the determining map for yep. these two teams. I 
you think that there was such a skill disparity between the two that it would be such a fast 2-0? I mean, we just, we haven't even been live for two hours yet in our matches and it's already over. We've already sent one team out of the playoffs. So, I mean, a relatively quick day for M80. They'll be back in action tomorrow against OXG. As for Space Station, you go to the last chance qualifiers. I don't want to say go down to it, but in a way it is a bit of a demotion. Because yeah. three teams will emerge from these playoffs to represent the region, and the remaining teams will have to scrape through the qualifiers, which is a real gauntlet. Well, there's another team that will be joining them in roughly about two to three hours or so, and it'll be one of Dark Zero versus Luminosity. Before we get to that series, any final thoughts on this match? I gotta say, man, EU on top. All I'm gonna say, I'm ripping it, I'm loving it, I'm a fan of it. And, you know, I think a lot of people said, you know, Spark went to NA, didn't do so much. MA didn't really achieve what they wanted to last year as an entirety. This could be the better iteration, if not already looking like the better iteration of this team. I agree with you. I think this is the best M80 has looked. We've said that about a number of teams over the last year or so. And today, whether they were the best iteration of M80 or not, they were the best team in the server. On those notes, we'll leave you with M80 winning 2-0 over Space Station. They only dropped two maps in the entire round robin, and now they're going to just one more BO3. They didn't need top two protections because they slaughter Space Station en route to a date with Oxygen tomorrow evening. M80 get a 2-0 victory over Space Station. And I think the fact that they had 16 points and only two losses, I think they kind of took that personally.
I mean, I took it personally. I mean, I got the nose because I picked Ashen, and I got the hair because I picked SSG. My predictions are totally out the window at this point. Yeah, no, looking Looking good. good. Looking looking like a clown. Looking Looking like even dyed his hair and everything. Look at this. Looking like a space station believer right there. And it's unfortunate that they were going up against one of the greatest teams in North America, M80, looking so good right now. The way they were able to continue that momentum from map one, continue finding those picks on the roam clear, continue getting aggressive. Even though there were a couple of close rounds, just like there were on bank, when things got super chaotic, it felt like M80 were always able to close that game down. I mean, even just, I want to talk about SSG specifically. I mean, there were so many instances where I thought, you know, there was going to be a little glimpse of hope and M80 just immediately shut it down. Or they really just switched up how they wanted to approach the situation. They were great at adapting, and that was something that SSG was terrible at. Well, go back to the times we saw Space Station play Consulate before. How many times did they win rounds off hero plays? The crazy Monty push downstairs, the times where they get a 3K out of nowhere. Even moments that seemed like a freak accident seemed like they went Space Station's way on this map before, and today it just didn't. And those rounds look a lot closer. And like I said, Bank was going to be a toss-up. I was hoping that going into this map was going to be completely different. If anything, it looked even worse. It looked like they didn't realize what the problems were. It didn't look like they were trying to be a team and trying to come together to fix those problems. And just like in the first map, you know, there were certainly rounds where Space Station started off with the advantage for it, opening picks, just like they got on map number one. But consistently, they weren't able to convert those into actual round wins. Consistently, we saw M80 doing a better job playing together. I think Space Station did improve on that later on into the into the game. It felt like by the very end of that matchup, they were trying to play closer as a unit. Uh, that round on attack where they got super, super fast and they just got in the building, got a flawless victory. That had me saying, okay, maybe we got some life out of Space Station, but it only lasted one round. When M80 were on attack, by the way, I was getting flashbacks to old 2018, 2019 concert with the amount of window kills that we were seeing. It started off that way and just went the entire time M80 were in the first half. I mean, it blew my mind and this is why I'm putting it on. I mean, if we can even just throw up some of these shots from the CEO window specifically, I mean, there were so many instances where you just don't swing the guy or you do it together, but like SSG went one by one by one by one, and then Sploit was grabbing kills, Citizen was grabbing kills, and it was just like, there's, there's so many different approaches you could do there to distract the guy in window, to stop the guy planting, and then yeah. every situation, SSG just gave it to him for free. Or were baiting utility, because how many times did they swing back into the eye? It was like three times in round one by itself, and then Citizen has perfect window cover. Again, it l- looked like it was consulate pre-rework in, in, in pro play. He- Kino didn't even have to kick anyone in the head this time. <laughs> like, Spoit was, yeah. and, and Citizen was. Like, yeah. I, I don't really know. It's, it's, it's a sad day because for SSG, they are such a good team, and they started out so strong, and they just completely fl- fell flat, like entirely flat, not the team that we saw in the beginning. I know that's not the performance they want to be putting on. I mean, here's, you know, a display of what I was talking about of just window games here. There's one dead. Oh, wait, hold on. Peak dead. All right. Mm -hmm. The other ones, you know, just waiting. What are we going to do? Ends up, you know, coming in. And then Citizen here getting another. This is what I would love to see from Space Station. Had they had they worked together, had they just worked together, someone sprint across, distract the guy in the window, kill the bomb planter, get back. The guy in the window is useless at that point. There's no coordination there. Dude just instantly run past his teammate. Dead. Both of them. It's interesting Space Station banned the Azami as well. That's something that could really do a great job of countering that window play. And the previous time, these two te- teams played each other on consulate. I believe Space Station banned the Smoke instead, which would have been a fine ban here as well. They don't typically play Smoke on this map, favoring some more of the Tachanka and whatnot. Um, but instead, they ban out the Azami. I feel like they really could have utilized that operator had it been on the board. And it's a great offer for M80 as well, but could have been an option there. They chose not to bring it. And I like that you say that. that the Tachanka is an option. If you're struggling that hard with that, which they did struggle against, M80 originally on that map and site specifically, like adjust to it. Do it differently. Don't yeah. force bodies into that situation because clearly in both those scenarios, it wasn't working. So I think Tachanka is even even more viable to force people out of that position. It stalls a lot of time. You got a lot of util that you can keep burning. I, that's, I don't, just don't know what to say. I'm a clown now. <laughs> You're going to have to live with it for a bit. We also spent a really long time hyping up one very particular matchup, only for both those players to not really have that much impact on the server when we were giving them so much hype. Instead, one guy had 27 kills over the course of two maps, Ben Citizen McMillan in the flesh. Dude, was there just something very specific that was in the water today that helped you guys get the dub? Why specifically were you just on fire? I have no idea. I just turned up and played and played well. So whatever I did today, I'll just do again tomorrow before, you know. 
Well, I just want to say Michael Jordan. I mean, citizen. <laughs> I mean, going into that bank game specifically, can you just give me the run through? You were in so many different positions where you were in the man disadvantage of a, whether it was a 2v1, a 1v3, whatever it was. Like, you just were always setting yourself up for success. And when you know you're in those situations, what's your best approach of, like, singling out those gunfights or whatever that looks like for you? I think it's just understanding, like, where the enemies were. And, like, obviously, we was making sure, like, oh, we knew one was, like, here and here and here. So, like, this will be free. And then we were making, like, the calculations that way. So, like, I would just take the gaps, basically, where the, the other guys weren't holding. And then the team as well, like, we'd always, like, we'd try and bait on bank, like, especially when the rounds went down, we'd try and, like, formulate a plan on the fly. And then everything just worked out perfectly. I mean, the calls were great for today from everyone. No, you were playing phenomenally. And Thank Citizen, uh, I wanted to touch on something that we're seeing right now. I mean, your face cam looks so much nicer than it has the previous couple of weeks. <laughs> and for all of your teammates, that is the case. Uh, I know you're in a new spot right now in the new Shopify uh, uh, situation. Can you talk about how much that matters to you guys? How much better this uh, location is compared to where you previous, uh, previously were? And how much of an impact do you think that makes? Well, I think like... I won't. I, I can't say anything bad about the last place we was at. Like everyone there was great. Like they helped us out when we needed it. They gave us like what we needed and kept us comfy. It's just like obviously the PCs went up to the best, but like here, like I'm getting 500 FPS. I'm on a 360 Hertz monitor. Like it's actually different. Like I, I can just float now instead of like struggling to breathe. You know. It's so scary that uh, now we got peak M80. The the M80 that won more games than any other team in the regular season wasn't even their peak. Now they've got their great setups and they're looking scary for playoffs. I wouldn't say, but out of curiosity, we saw Bo uh, Bodega on Twitter after the regular season was over, talking about the way the format works, the fact that you guys only lost two games so far for one stage. Did you guys come into today with a chip on your shoulder, knowing you probably were the better team, but the record just didn't reflect it? Nah, we didn't care. It was just standard coach complaining after like happens every <laughs> single time this situation happens the coach is always going to complain happened with team one when they were at invite when Navi knocked him out like you know that, like it's going to happen like we don't care like it's whatever you just move on and focus for the next game fair play at least it's a good thing to know that the coach has got your back last thing before you let you go yeah oxygen tomorrow faced him just in the very last best one that you played in the round robin talk to me about what you see in that matchup even if you can't spoil anything just just initial impressions because you have to face him again I don't know, we beat him last time, but I think like they're just going to bring the A game. I think they want to, like obviously we got the break and rise, like Willy and Kino, because they're obviously ex-teammates with him. So I think they want the break and rise back, but I doubt we'll give it to him. I think we'll take it either way. Well, congratulations on making a statement in this one, dude. We will see you tomorrow. Get, get busy in scrims, dude. It's going to be a good game. Yep. Yeah, it definitely will. Thank you. So I think we are at a point where we may, may, I'm not saying we totally have to, may have to admit that the best team in North America actually doesn't have any North Americans on it. Wrong. <laughs> That's just the state that we're in right now. Good uh, Lord. Good game for NA, but I, I, for, for some people who are like NA purists, that's kind of a tough pill to swallow for sure. Ah, there's nothing wrong with that. We needed those EU imports and those Brazilian imports to find some mm -hmm. success, success in our region nonetheless. And I mean, M80's doing it. The Certainly, and I think obviously Citizen, the best player today, but we not talk about how there's so many players in M80 that can pop off, have big moments. Obviously, sport's been great in the past. We've seen Noodle have ridiculously good games. Even cameraman Kino been playing very well this stage so far. So uh, it, it's been great. Unfortunately, they send M, uh, they send Space Station Gaming down to the last chance qualifier. They are not completely out of it. They do have a chance to to run it back and beat all the other teams in the NAL. But for now, they are they are done with playoffs and they can no longer get a top three finish, which is what sends you to the Manchester Major. The place where Space Station qualified for Atlanta was through that LCQ. It's something they're certainly no strangers to. They'll have to meet a revamped Sonics next week, who, for their own part, have a, a secret weapon up their sleeve they've been <laughs> hiding until now. But we'll save that for next week. For M80, they progress to the semifinals. They've got a matchup they have to worry about. And now we have one more quarterfinal left to get through because this bad boy is certainly going to be interesting. It's Luminosity and Dark Zero. It's not a battle of the Titans, but it is instead a battle of competing expectations and two completely different sides of the coin. That's coming up next.
One quarterfinal down, one to go, but this one's got the same level of intrigue for entirely different reasons. One team had huge expectations on their shoulders and just barely squeaked by. The other had no expectations and surpassed them sevenfold. And as quarterfinals go, this one's interesting because Luminosity are standing in the shadow of the Dark Zero Colossus. Welcome back to the North American League. I'm Jacob, he's Laxing, he is Jesse, and this is quarterfinal number two, an instance where under any other circumstance, we would just assume Dark Zero probably takes in a clean 2-0 sweep, but because of the way the regular season went, because of the way the best of one swept, it's not the same case anymore, which means this game actually might be a close one. Yeah, I mean, we hyped up DZ going into this stage initially because they had a really solid run at SI and then fell immediately flat. Well, I don't want to say fell flat, but there was not the performance that we were seeing at SI specifically, which was really hindering their performance and getting those points of even possibly clenching this spot. Certainly, Dark Zero have not had the stage that you want to see out of DZ, out of a team that made top six the six invitational, but now they play Luminosity, a team who a lot of people didn't have doing very well through the stage. I won't lie, I didn't predict them to make play Playoffs, but they've completely surpassed expectations. They come through now, and now they get their real big challenge. The games that they won throughout the regular season, some of them were against the lower tier opponents, some of them were against really good opponents who maybe were having some bad days. Not that they played poorly, but this will be the toughest test for Luminosity. Dark Zero in a best of three, what have you got? I mean, the biggest thing for their entire SI run in the first place was because it was best of threes. We never saw them at a best of one contention when they had this roster in particular. So for Dark Zero, we keep talking about them because that was the expectation that was set. There are fall-offs after events, many of which are cataclysmic, but DZ didn't do that. Even if that strong SI performance didn't translate into this stage, they still performed where it mattered. They're still in playoffs, so a lot of people would think, don't worry about the best of ones, we're here now. Yeah, and what's interesting about them even qualifying for this in general, they were one game way of not making it. Had they not swamped Wildcard, they would not be here right now. They would have to be in those LCQs. And then on top of it, you know, we talked about them going into the stage and their performance at SI, regardless of the best of threes. The biggest thing was is they understood attacks at SI, which is what propelled them to be so well. And then they come into this stage where their attacks were abysmal, to say the least. And you see for Dark Zero, they've played Luminosity throughout the season so far. It was not a close game. 7-2 DZ slammed them. For me, that was a big turning point for NJR coming alive in the season. It felt like before that, NJR was really struggling to have an idea of where players were on the map. He wasn't really seemingly in the DZ system, which is odd because yeah. he's been on the squad for so long at this point. But that game was where NJR popped off and really started to come alive. Since that game, NJR has been playing very well for Dark Zero. So if this is a team that makes NJ come alive, he could be very very scary today. But in the midst of a stage that has been rife with issues, one thing has stayed constant through all the chaos. Canadian happens to still like one particular bald operator with a heartbeat scanner. Yes, he does, Jacob. And I don't think there's any operator player combination in the history of Siege that is more iconic than Canadian on Pulse. He's been playing this operator for eight years at this point, and he continues to use it so, so effectively. He played it a ton last week when Dark Zero got back-to-back 7-1 -back victories. This is one round in particular where notice how he's finding every single player on the map. All of these OXG players, Canadian and spotting it with a pulse scanner. And even if he's not getting the kills directly, he's feeding intel to his teammates. This is Pambazoo taking care of the Nomad as he walks on into that uh, room up on the top floor. He uses the C4, whether it lands or not, he's still finding that impact, feeds the intel to his teammate there, you saw it. And this continuously happens throughout the round. Canadian's always able to get that in intel. Again, it is Canadian's best operator and we've seen him use it so well in this last week of the NAL. We've seen him use it so well historically. He is a god at pulse. Yeah, and I love that you talk about feeding the intel because Troy isn't the most mechanically gifted. I think we can all agree with that. But the thing, if you allow Troy to feed that information, to get that information for his team and to play out that information, you are putting DZ in such a power position because that is literally where Troy has excelled through his entire career. Uh -huh. And this game is a display of it nonetheless. I remember this, this one. old game. Oh, yeah. I went back in the archives to find some amazing uh, clips from, from Canadian on this operator. Again, his legacy has been so storied playing the Pulse multiple, even of his... Uh, uh, current teammate that he's gone up against sometimes. He's always been so strong with this. The massive clutch against TSM. Many fans are going to remember this one where Canadian willing to get loud, willing to let him know how he feels. And uh, it's just been a joy to watch Canadian play this off throughout his career and also recently. You remember that this clip also almost didn't happen, by the way, because of a Windows key screw up? <laughs> yeah. Like earlier in this clip, like specifically, as he's like, well, wait, wait, Windows key almost took it away from me. That's when they won <laughs> SI right there. That is where they won SI. That's yeah. when it all that's when it all happened. And listen, he's not winning any awards for 
<laughs> for the cleanest mouth. <laughs> You're playing Twitch. One of the best clips in Rainbow Six history right there. Absolutely. But the, the recent play on Pulse here, this is only from this stage, have been fantastic. You see that seven rounds picked. Five of those rounds were just last week when they had back-to-back 7-1 -back victories, of course. Six of those rounds that they were able to win. Even though he's not finding all the kills, 3-3 three and three KD, 57 costs, he's not getting the individual stats. He's contributing to the round wins, and that's what matters for Canadian on Pulse. All right. All I'm hearing for LG in pregame is ban the Pulse, and you should find a way to win this matchup. But there are some things that LG can exploit on DZ side. It wasn't a perfect stage, mostly because there was a guy who was a really hot young rising star early in his career. We haven't talked about him for a single pregame so far to start this stage. It's Pambazoo. Yeah, Pamba is someone that I want to talk about because we have talked about every single person on this roster. And Pamba has always been a standout performer for DZ initially. And, you know, you look here at Atlanta. He was a 110 EPS rating. Then now, you know, SI 2024, he's at a 95. SI, I mean, stage one now, he's at a 96 EPS. He's plateauing right now. And this is where I feel if he can just find his footing, he can find that old Pamba Zoo that we all know and love, that Pamba party time, that will set DZ up even for more success than what they already currently are trying to do right now with their current roster. And I think for Pamba, it's always going to be a tale of two sides. You know, he's got to be that entry player, both on attack and on defense. But sometimes it's a lot easier to find those picks for Dark Zero on the defensive half. I really think that with Pamba do trying to play aggressive, trying to play on those roam stats, he's just had a better time on defense because there's less steps involved, yeah. right? So for Dark Zero, obviously, there have been a lot of those. Uh, it's been a tale of two halves, certainly throughout this game or throughout this stage. And that's definitely something I'm looking for them to fix in this uh, upcoming matchup. Well, there's another thing that LG could exploit. It's the fact that DZ are really good on one side of the ball, but on the other, things could look a little bit better. I mean, that's exactly what I was just saying, right? I mean, we can see the stats in particular. Defense from last week, Dark Zero played two matches. They started on defense both times. They went 6-0, and back-to-back games. Then they played four rounds on attack, two from each. They lost their first attacking round every single time. So even though we've seen Dark Zero dominate in recent matches, they've been heavily carried by their strong defenses. Uh, Dark Zero throughout this stage, their problems have been on attack. I am still waiting Waiting to find out if Dark Zero's attacks have actually gotten better since the start of the stage or if they're still struggling with it just because we didn't see many attacks from them last week. The big question is though, are Luminosity the team that can take advantage of a pretty gaping hole like that where Dark Zero are within the bottom three of teams in the best of one on that attacking side? For LG, different story, total inverse of DZ. Squad of only two players of last year remaining, reforging around some rookies, then getting some good wins over top teams, some questionable losses against other not so good teams, but for a very young squad, there's some promise to this LG team so far. Yeah, and what I've really appreciated about LG is it feels like they go into every round with a plan. They always know what their win condition is, especially on defense. They need, they know if they need to stall out time on the roam, they'll all do that on the team, then they'll all fall back. If they need to go for flanks, they'll do that. They'll always commit to it. I do worry for them in some of the individual gunfights. That was a big problem the last time they played Dark Zero, which is getting into those 1v1 engagements and being able to consistently win them. But I think when it comes to the overarching story, this team has been very, very good at having the right plan. Yeah, and you look at their team's, I mean, success overall. I mean, they're obviously finding way more success than what even their old roster was. They're here in playoffs where the other iteration of LG could not make that. And one of the biggest things for me is with this roster is that their, their map pool isn't that good. It's not that talented to me. It's not something that you can look at and be like, this team is super solid. You see the one and three on Clubhouse. Keep in mind, they beat Beast Coast on that Clubhouse, and that was before Beast Coast really started turning up, and now first in the league. And then you have the 1-0 on Skyscraper against M80. I would like to dedicate a lot of that specifically to... Um, hat popping off? Yeah, the hat popping off specifically. And then you get the Oregon against Wildcard. They played that 700 times. That's nothing crazy. Los obviously was having a pretty shaky season nonetheless. You win that consulate. If you're, if you're in LG's position right now, you're in a best of three. The team that you're going against now is DZ. DZ is going to exploit that. DZ is going to make sure to punish you and realize where you're strong at and where your weakness is. And that's always how DZ has played into. So I have no doubt when we get into these map bands, we are going to see DZ totally exploiting LG into those maps. Clubhouse is one thing because if you play it four times, you lose it that many times. It's a very clear weak point. Yep. But how much is having only five maps played an actual strength when you know that you have some that you haven't played yet? Is it a good thing for a team like this or is it a problem because again, there young they don't have that much experience playing tier one with each other quite it yet. can be both but for a newer team i would like to see you try to get out of your comfort zone especially going to clubhouse four times and really not finding success and then now you're in a situation where you're in a best of three where sure you don't have those maps that you can expose or have been exposed and so now you can do it here but 
when you played in pro play, that's what really tested, in my opinion. And having that, I don't know, it just, it, it, it's a tough spot. And we already see the first map coming through Labs. I predicted LG might ban this map just because it is one that can be very tough for a newer team. And it's also a super strong map for Dark Zero. I thought maybe they'd let the cafe go through this time because they saw Dark Zero play cafe early on in the stage. They won it, but it was a overtime game. It's certainly messy. They choose to ban it anyways. They go to Labs instead for Dark Zero. And then they get the border, which I think is actually a really good map for LG to take. Dark Zero have sometimes struggled when the map can be a little bit fast paced. They've struggled sometimes when they have to get right in on that gunfight. So I think Border's a great map to capitalize on Dark Zero's playstyle, but it's not one we've seen DZ play recently. So I'm, both of these cases are maps where LG have yet to play them so far through the regular season, though. Correct. And DZ like Labs, but a question for me is similar to Sonic's and Beast Coast, is Beast Coast threw that out of nowhere. They threw Sonics for a loop, they ended up winning that game. This could be a situation here, I don't really see that. But then Border, like you were saying, I think Border can be a good map. It's kind of similar maybe to a clubhouse map. If you play together as a team, you get those crossfires, you can play into that position and stop DZ at their foothold on those attacks. But then now, clubhouse. Again, I really don't even count that 1-3 record as a 1-3 record. I really would see that as an 0-4 because you played Beast Coast when they were having that identity before they crisis. Powered up. Right. Yeah, before they powered up. And even then, they didn't even win that super convincingly, to my knowledge. So you're going again to a clubhouse where I, I see it as an 0-4. You really have to start out strong here on labs and then push to a board and then possibly make that your third map going into club. I mean, the more unpredictable part of the whole phase is just where border fits in. We've seen so little of it in North American competition in general for the past six months. But the first map is intriguing just because we think Dark Zero is a pretty darn good team on that map, assuming they get the right side. LG is defending first, so how this first map goes is going to sway the whole series because we saw it in the first series. Gentlemen, predictions again. Jesse, you had it right the first time. Can you get it right the second and stop Foxy before he takes the belt away from you? I am hoping and praying that Foxy has gone for luminosity here because <laughs> I don't think I can. I think Dark Zero, the way that they've been able to turn their se se uh, series around, yeah, oh, I mean, there it is. winning back-to-back 7-1 -back games towards the end of last week. I'm still worried about their attacks, and we'll see at the start of Nighthaven how that looks for them, but I love their defenses right now, and I think Dark Zero looks so, so strong. I'd love to be wrong, but... I don't think I will be. Lax, is there anything you can do to get yourself out of a perpetual third place in the standings right now? As long right as now? I can get over 50% and not put on that clown outfit again, I'm about to go with DZ. Still DZ across the board. So, f dude, Fox's lead at this point, he figured out what he had to do in the best of ones to just get a huge lead because coming into BO3s, it's all series-based. It's not map-based, which means he needs to get a couple of these wrong. Now's your chance. I'm giving you an opportunity. If you really feel like it, is there anything about LG's play that thinks maybe there's a chance that we can swap over because you don't have that many opportunities left to surpass him in the standings. He could walk away with this thing and you wouldn't have a shot left. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, the biggest thing here for LG, it goes into what you were saying, you want to see their attacks. If LG huh? can meet them on their attacks with their defense of being aggressive and stopping DZ, that is where I will see Luminosity shine. If they can't, they're going to absolutely get swamped by DZ. But you don't think they can actually do it? No, I'm still sticking with DZ nonetheless. All right, fair. What you have? Uh, here's the game plan for Luminosity real quick, right? I think they start defense Nighthaven Labs. They run over them. Hat drops 20 kills as he did against M80 on Skyscraper, another defender-sided map. They get like a 6-0 half, and then Dark Zero crumble their own second half. Then they go to their own map pick. They go to Border. They just outgun them. They come through. They go so fast that Dark Zero can't find a hold of it. Dark Zero struggle to slow the map down. They 2-0 it. Easy. So that, that, that's it. That's the game plan. He I mean, the, biggest, the game plan, but it's forgot, not reality. He like, literally forgot the biggest game plan, which, like, I'm surprised. You have to hunt Troy. You have to hunt you Troy. You have to Troy ban will be Pulse, by himself. and you have to hunt Troy. Absolutely. Troy will be by himself <laughs> on Rumble. You see a Solus or you see a Pulse, he's by himself. That's what Luminosity has to shoot for. Well, cool. It seems pretty obvious to us what LG has to do to win this be the best of three, but it's going to take a second before we get everybody on the server. So when we do, this bad boy will start, and then we'll see who has a date in the semifinals coming up tomorrow night. We'll be back in just a sec.
Well, it looks like the Siege Gods have decided that Dark Zero and Luminosity's quarterfinal matchup needs to be put on hold for a little while longer until we can get the, ser the server situated. So instead, we've decided to go off the books a little bit and do something that I don't think has been done in a tier one live context before. We're about to VOD review an old game because we need a little bit more time before the servers are ready to come back online. So, guys, what game do you think we're VOD reviewing? I think we are VOD reviewing SI Grand Finals from 2017. 2017? Yeah, we're Sp laxing one. Specifically the Xbox yep. one. That's Ooh. what I think we're VOD reviewing. I think we're doing TSM versus a little Reciprocity Chalet, and we are not. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> oh, wait. This just happened not that long ago. So just for clarification, this is not Dark Zero and Luminosity playing... Defenders, protect Wait. your bombs from being defended. They are playing, they're playing right now. This is literally DZ versus Luminosity. Attack this is literally DZ versus Luminosity. Stop confusing them. This is this the is last time they played. Where Pamba... No, not Pamba. Where NJR flew through Solar Window and managed to get a three-piece with someone on the solar stairs. This is the game that occurred just a couple weeks ago on Playday 5 between DZ and LG. This is not the game that is currently being scheduled. Instead, this is just us talking over the game as if the casters didn't do a good enough job when they did it earlier. We're about to do one better, apparently. Well, I'm pretty sure that's why we're doing it. I would like to predict that Dark Zero win. Can we please add that to my prediction? That's a tally? great prediction. We'll put that on your percentage Thank right you. now. I'm going to say like seven, probably a, I'm feeling a seven two. Here. Seven two. I'm feeling a seven two. I think Dark Zero probably win this first one. You're uh, literally looking at your test. notes. You don't know what he's looking at. It's an open book test. You don't know what, what he's looking tell at. You. Well, I mean, in this open book test, as we're calling it, uh -huh. I uh, accidentally chose Luminosity. So I'm going to rewrite my prediction and going to choose Dark Zero here. Because originally I chose Luminosity because Dark Zero actually lost their head, well, their other game that was previously that day. Yep. I figured it was gonna be the same result here. But no, NJR flew through a solar window and got a three-piece. That doesn't happen. That shouldn't happen. Credit, credit to LG for the Glass Sentence play, at least trying something different. How many times have we seen very little Sens in this stage? Yeah, but this is like the Sens site. This is like the first well, night everybody one is, yeah. plays Sens on. It's like very, very popular to play Sens on this bomb site. And Hat, I don't think like they don't time things very well. I mean, the fact that the 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 glass die is thrown a smoke out clearly before they're really set up. Nobody's able to actually do anything off these smokes. They obviously don't have top floor control. I don't know. It's just a little bit poorly executed. And I think it ends up being Naif who kind of pops off in this round and shuts it down. Are you just looking at your notes? Yeah. Okay. Um, but no, he's the oracle. He's predicting what's about to happen. Well, he keeps looking to the left, so it's throwing me off. You don't know That's what he's looking crystal at. Ball he could be looking at anything on that laptop. Mm. Nope, it's crystal ball. He could be looking at the score of the Phillies game I'm right predicting now. a NAIF 3K upcoming. NAIF 3K? Yes. Where does well, he, he has get to get all these last three kills for Where it Where does he get three kills from, though? Above. Something tells me that NAIF goes up above and vertically kills three people. That's my, that's my, that's my premonition. Interesting. Interesting. Well, I mean, I guess we're going to find out and see how accurate you are. Did Nave get that kill? Oh, who was that? that? Oh, kill. he indeed oh. got that kill. <laughs> Holy moly. Nave. Oh, my goodness. Stop the count. What um, about this? What about this kill right here? Mm. I think the Ash gets this one, if my memory is correct. Yeah, I think Ash kills this person. Yeah. NJ. Not a flawless. This was before, well, I said it. This is like the game where NJR made his comeback, right? Before this game, NJR had been playing on Dark Zero, been playing kind of bad. Stats were not very good. He was getting caught off guard a lot. This was the game where NJR popped off. I think he was the MVP. I think he had the best, I think he had the most kills. Um, and then uh, and then after this game, NJR continued to play well. So I mean, two kills just to stunt the push at the start of this. Silence starts to go a little bit crazy, but it's a little too little too late. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is all in all a great game from NJ, even though he did, uh, he was the first person to die on Dark Zero. That sucks. I think the biggest issue is here, there isn't a pulse. Like, even with Nafe securing this round. To be fair, he kind of doesn't need it. He just needs the worst gun of the game, and he's fine. See? You look a little cozy toast over there. I am. I'm big cozy, dude. I brought I brought the nice jacket today. Mm. I actually like that jacket. I like it, too. I bought it for Atlanta and then wore it on, like, the first day of, uh, of Swiss. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, it was like nice. That. Why didn't you get the memo? Yeah, my bad. To wear a good jacket? Came in with, like, a picnic blanket. The first time, you want to know a fun story. The first time I ever wore this shirt on broadcast was the first year of NAL. The color correction was not very good. 
And it That's showed up as like your corn pop shirt. No, no, no. It showed up as orange stripes instead of pink stripes. And everybody in chat called me the Whataburger man. <laughs> <laughs> They're totally right. And now I've always just thought of the shirt as my Whataburger shirt. Dude. I actually do like your fit. It looks solid. Thank you. It's a good fit. Thank you. I like your jacket, too. Even though I, I, I take it back. I said it looked like my grandma's curtains, but I, I take it back. I mean, it's, it, it can still good. look like grandma's curtains, but still look good when Lax wears it. You guys realize you don't like have to say that on broadcast, especially because Twitch chat is like going to 100% eat that up. Are they? Yes. Absolutely. There was a time... As much as Twitch chat loves me... Back in 2020, I wore a yellow-white flannel, and Parker said I looked like Anthony Fantano, and I'm never going to live that down, and I don't think I've worn that shirt on broadcast since. You really let him get to you, didn't you? I did. You can't I, let Parker I, let, I, let, I let Parker Mackay get under my skin, and that was a mistake I'll never make again. Parker's a little rascal. You really can't trust anything he says. <sighs> That's facts. That is true. Uh... I have written in my notes that Wi-Fi has a fantastic Mav play on this round. So we'll Lax, see. Lax, what do you think happens? I think he goes in snow. Lax, what do you think Oh! Happens? Well, that pretty was, good. I was just good. about to say, I'm pretty sure someone's about to die peeking this garage uh, Mav. But that's so crazy. This round specifically, I think Dark Zero walk away with it by just taking sight and just stopping Luminosity in every single instance of trying to regain the site here. They're gonna get the map control that they need. They're gonna lay down that Nomad. That is, I'm gonna be honest, that's not the best Nomad I've ever seen. <laughs> I probably could give a little bit of tips here and where you can lay your Nomads, because laying it underneath a hatch just doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. Did that Nomad make sense, the one bottom None blue? of these have made any bit of sense to me. Damn. There's a lot oh. that I could teach people. Waxing hates so Nomad so placements. Confirm. I mean, you played a ton of Nomads. I was so gonna say, sense, to be but... fair, like if I'm gonna like critique a Nomad, like, more math I'm gonna critique a nomad. This is the most standard, the most it's standard effective, though. It's effective. In the it's effective. game of Shellac. <laughs> like, he gets that, the line. That would be it like coordinated. That would be like he if you're on cares Clubhouse. If it was sexy or not. That would be like if you were on Clubhouse and people get like they're in server cache and they get the garage walls <laughs> and they get the plat wall. And you're like, that is amazing. They did that. <laughs> no, but it's denying all of the back bar. It's denying all the bar storage, as as it does. You know, how well does NGR do in this round? I Did think I he just dies? I don't think he gets a kill. Damn. I think he gets Ooh. fried pretty soon, actually, because they just jump in. They never take top. I think hatch is hard right now. I don't think it's open, so they just say screw it. We'll jump in, kill NJ. I'm pretty sure hatch was soft. Was it soft? He has covered a half wall. Yeah, you see the you see the debris. No, no, no. I think it's because it's reinforced. Oh, I got dunked on. Is it hard? I'm pretty sure it's hard. Observer, can you please... Oh, that's not going to work, is it? I don't think they can hear us. Oops. What do you mean? This is live. I mean, it was live. Mm. Good job, Wi-Fi. Swing back around and find Nave. Pop up. Was that right? It was. Engineer Does he even need to pop up? Hey. I mean, if you call 2K a good round, it's pretty solid. Good job, Wi-Fi. Proud of you. Don't use your notes and predict this next round. Okay, well, I, are, I I can tell you for a fact easy win it just from remembering my notes. I won't look. Uh, what's the site? Do they go top here? I'm about to find. I don't know. Do no, they? I think they go basement. God, I don't remember. Come on, I'm, Oracle boy. My memory is actually out. so bad. What player out of DZ has the best back room setup? Or actually, any one of these players, any ten of these players, who has the best setup in their room? I'll be honest, none of those were very good. I'm covering my notes. It is the basement. Um, Dark Zero win it. Um, who gets picked first? Who does get picked first? I'm gonna go with somebody on LG just because I'm pretty confident they lose the round. I'm gonna go with. Do I pick the Finca here? I think uh, I think we'll just we'll, we'll lock in with the Finca. Is that hat? Okay. Yeah, I so think we're gonna pick, we're gonna pick someone from LG. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna say. Well, I'm still gonna say Eddie. Okay. Five seconds remaining. Fair enough. Attacker's objective is to defuse the bomb. This is the thing. I don't know how casters talk for a solid minute and a half until something actually happens over the course of a round. How do they do it? How are they so good at it? They know what to say, what to feel every time. They have a wonderful job. I'm gonna be honest. I'm not a caster. I like being the analyst. I like... say, would you ever want to cast, or is that just not kind of your... Cast the name my forte. I'll leave that to the experts that know how to do it. 
tough job, but if you can do it well, well, that was that was there's the a thing. lot of good benefits. That was from the it. interesting thing about like coming from a player to this is I have a newfound respect, and I said this before. I have a newfound respect for the work that you guys do here because it definitely takes a very particular kind of person or just in general sort of logic, thinking, whatever, how you articulate things and put it into this in like such a short time window. Yeah. That's not something I ever thought about as a player and now having to do it, I have a lot more respect for the people in this industry, 100%. And even from a production standpoint too, you don't see this stuff as a player. I've always said it's much harder being an analyst than it is a player because I have to spend fewer hours working I have to go to every single event. I don't even have to qualify for them. So tiring, me. dude. I yeah, it's it's exhausting work being an analyst. <laughs> that is the most <laughs> insane statement I have ever heard in my life. <laughs> but I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, I agree. Was yeah, I right? Being an analyst is right. a million times harder than being a player. Absolutely. <laughs> the pressure of being an analyst to perform, <laughs> if your points and articulate. Like oh yeah, you you're properly you're do. sitting on a stage in front of ten thousand people trying to shoot people in the head in the video games. I get that. I have to be on the desk. I have to say words from my notes. Bro, you're, you're sitting right now in front of an audience of no people. I know. It's the easiest job ever. I sorry, know. sorry. The hardest, hardest. job ever. Hardest. Yep. You've never had a job any harder than this. You know what's crazy, too? You say we're sitting in here of a crowd of zero okay, people. Hold on. This round specifically was crazy. Right. My bad. Just for the simple fact, if you remember correctly, Kix could have won this. He 100% could have won this round, and I believe he swings out and challenges Troy. Is this this round? Yes, this is 100%. I thought that happened round. later. Uh-uh, it's this round. I think Kix plays this, like, perfect. No, this is later. You're thinking of a different round. Am I? Yeah. No, I don't. Let's see. Hang on, hang on. I don't think I am, because I'm pretty sure he pistol whips this guy. Yep, and Good then job. he swings oh. out right here. No, you're right. Oh, is this the round he should have won? Yeah, yeah that was the round he should have won. Yeah. Came out of the wire. If he just backed up into that hallway, Kix 100% wins that round. True. Anyway, Jesse, what were you saying? I was going to say, we have, like, chairs for an audience in front of us. There's currently like, we do. There are currently every single segment. There are probably I'm going to say like 40 chairs where people could come and watch us live, but nobody ever does. Yeah. Not not once has anybody that I've seen ever come and watched us. I've invited Which, I've it, invited 40 people to come fill those chairs every single time that ghost me. To be fair, it would be a fun. bad show I do. because our voices are not being broadcast and also you can't watch the game. You could only watch three of us on the on the couches. That's true. So like, like <laughs> that's there's a reason the why studios don't have audience. You have to, you know, <laughs> articulate it and let the people see the, and hear what you're trying to project. The real challenge of being an analyst is you go on between the games, right? And like everybody in Twitch chat is always saying Play more analyst desk. Play more analyst desk. We want to hear the analyst talk. So don't start the game yet. And like you've got to, unfortunately, deny the people what they want, which is more analysis desk. And you've got to at some point throw to the game. That's probably the most difficult part. It's like fitting all of your all of the things that you want to say and cutting out so many things because at the end of the day, the players are so greedy. It's a lot of pressure being the best part of the broadcast. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's there's a lot of work that goes into it. Everyone's always clamoring for more, but we have to turn it down sometimes. Lex, how does it feel to go from being a player which made no money and now being in this position where you you are you are the biggest part of a show and if you're not on, people just tune out? Yeah, I mean. Yeah, making no money as a player was definitely <laughs> insane, but you know, we, we got by. But now being being in this being in this position, making all the money, now, all the money. I mean, it, it's it's great. It's it's such you a you made so much money. You bought a jacket made out of a rug. We're just roasting me again. <laughs> all right. Well, you know, good money went into this rug. You went into this quality. She was a great rug in a former it life. Was a great rug. <laughs> it feels good though. Like this. It does. This, what does the inside warm. feel like? Oh Is it more? Yeah, I bet it would keep you kind of warm. At it's least in like kinda. A, it's definitely gonna. Keep oh, I mean, like you bring inside. it, you bring yeah. it out to an Edmonton winter, you're freezing to death. But you bring it to like a, a nice fall day. Yeah, it keep you warm. You guys don't know fashion. I'm just gonna be completely honest. You're with you. darn right. I don't know fashion. You got. You got I'm wearing vans, on. dude. I'm still wearing You're these things. Prepared for the flood right now. Yes, sir. Absolutely. <laughs> these guys. I swear to God. Jump out. Hambazoo. If you think about it, some of these rounds, LG possibly could have won, and I think had they won some of those rounds, like the round that kicks could have won that last one, that could have put DZ 
on their back burner of not being able to possibly win this map. <laughs> this I, is, thought, I thought you were going to run that how, how we usually run rehearsals, where it's like, the thing about this round is when the players are walking forward and they're really trying to get that ground, they're really making these moves and they're making the plays that really matter to the team. And I really <laughs> think when you take a look at the broad picture, the way that Luminosity could be winning some of these rounds, the way that the rounds could be being won, that's really the key thing to focus on. And I think when you're Luminosity, you're looking back at some of these rounds, the important thing to focus on is just how the rounds were won and how they were not won. And sometimes that's the key thing as a player is like, yes, sometimes you, you win and sometimes you don't, but when you win, it's really important to make sure those are like really winning rounds versus when you're not winning rounds. And sometimes it just ends up being a bit more of like a round that you just don't win. That made so much sense. Thank you. And we actually do do that. Yeah, that's my every rehearsal. That you do what? That, during the rehearsals, that is how we... No, you, no you do what? We do that exact thing of breaking you, down. You said, like, do you do like, that. You said it like that. Yeah, yeah. we do, yeah. do do that. Yeah, so we do, like... We do do that. We do do that. We try to... We do do that. Try to say as little as possible in the most amount of time to prepare us for the desk where we do the same thing, where we say as, as little as possible in the most amount of time. We say one sentence yeah. per every 30 seconds. But that sentence can be like maximum five words. So we have to really elongate our sentences for as long as we possibly can. Yes. <laughs> yes. I love that we're watching a timeout during a break. <laughs> like, we break for the break content to go to a break within the break. Great talk timeout. This is, this is never going to end. Oh, boy. At, at no point will this end. Well. Oh, boy. Three oh, hey, so we had two people come the, join us to, to come members. watch oh, the broadcast. We got three. We got three. Yay. We got three. Big ferment. We actually have audience. an audience. Oh, it's three people now. Dude, Heck it, yeah. it, was, it was nobody for five weeks straight, and now it's three people. I also want to say, before we, before we went on air for this, for this segment, Gabe brought over a Connect 4 board, smoked him. Wasn't even close. You, you should be he playing more Connect 4. Right? Blindsided. Play more Connect 4. It's play. right there. What do you mean I didn't play? We didn't. We didn't play. I literally oh, brought it over here to try this? to play so we could play on stream. Alternatively, we could, we, before could we grab the chess board that's over there, too? We could play I'm that. so instead. bad at chess. Right. We should do chess on stream. We could play chess any day of the week. You at least know how chess works, right? I know I know the moves. We could do that. I'm not 100% on how, like, castling works. I'm terrible at checkers. Mm. We might be able once, to get a chess board on stream. Once, right once when I was a kid, I was in, like, a, I was probably grade one. And I was playing checkers with like somebody in the class. Did you like say it was like first a grade? school in like a school project. Just right? say first grade. Just start that over and say first grade. In grade one, I was playing in first grade. Grade one. You, do you say like fourth grade? I guess you yes. Would. Yes, that's exactly. But I would say grade that's four exactly too. Exactly what we say. We Anyways, say fourth grade. I, I was in grade one and I was playing checkers and I would like. I was clearly losing, right? Like, I was going to lose the game. Yeah, But clearly. I was, like, so upset I was going to lose it. I was, like, I invented a secret rule. I was, like, no, when you're down to your last piece, you can go from one side of the board to the other side. And I jumped it from one side, whoop, all the way to the other. And the other kid was, like, that's that cheating. Just let that out? I was about to say. No, I was, like, the other kid was, like, cheating. I was, like, no, no, it's a game. secret rule. You don't know it. And then... Uh, it didn't fly. The teacher was, like, that's not a rule. And I was, But like, you can't play with schoolhouse rules in what? Grade one? What's wrong? You said grade one. I did say grade one. First grade? But I, I usually say first grade. I said it just to make oh, the Canadian usually. in the room feel mm. happy. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. First grade just sounds better than grade one. Anyways, I uh, I have never won a game since. That sucks. You've also never won any Siege game since I've watched you play ranked. That's messed up. Sorry. When do you watch me play ranked? All the time. Okay. When I'm you always, come over? I'm always sitting in your Discord. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. All right, we might have a, a delivery here. Let's see. Oh, hey, is that we a do. Jenga board? That's Let's actually go. way oh, dude, we, more fun. Do we even have an audience cam? Are you kidding me right now? A Jenga board would actually be way more fun. Okay. What, Thank you, Ferme. You. All right, we, we have Jenga, so we're going to uh, set up Jenga while we're watching this game. I remember playing Jenga. I got stories for days. I remember being at the Mexico Major playing Jenga. I wasn't with, there. Nope. With all the <laughs> Sonics players. <laughs> There's like eight of us probably playing. It was Can most you help me set this players. up? Sure. My cord doesn't really reach. And um, honestly, there's not really a moral to the story. I think Yeti lost. I don't remember. But somebody lost, and it was very... I didn't. And that's my that's my Jenga story for the day. What? Who does that? Why do you, like, just go on the outside so I have to fit it in the middle? Are you okay? What are you doing? I keep getting criticized unfairly. Nothing I do is good enough for you, Gabe. That was like the most ideal situation you stood with there, was grabbing two and stacking them next to each other. I don't know what else you were trying to do. 
This is getting weird. Chill, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's gonna fall down anyways. I'm a perfectionist. I don't know why, I don't know why. we're not focusing on the Jenga cam right now. Can, can we get uh, a close up on the on them if they set up, please? Already... Oh my god, does it matter? Yes. Isn't the point that it's supposed to be a little imperfect, so it's like harder to Can hat one v two. No! Anyway, DZ win. I think you want to go on a picnic. I would love to go on a picnic right now. It's actually beautiful. Well, it was beautiful last time I went outside. To be fair, that was a good. It was, dude, it was six windy hours and like ago. like fifty seven degrees in Philadelphia today. It wasn't that great. No, it was nice when I was when I came to the studio. Oh, at like ten in the morning. Yeah, I came. Oh, in, I, I came at like one p.m. No, you literally messaged the chat at like ten a.m. and said, "Yeah, hey, you were like, I want, I want to go over and get my." Yeah, charger. I messaged at ten a.m. I'm going over a little early for breakfast and to get my laptop cord, and then I didn't leave for like two hours. And I didn't again, say I was leaving. And now. what did you eat for breakfast today? <laughs> no, we're not what getting into. What did you eat for breakfast today? <laughs> Can we start a poll real quick I had for, for the Twitch mods who are undoubtedly listening? Today. Pancakes versus waffles, chat. What's what's the what's the end? We need this settled now because these two hooligans I don't, I'm, will not stop oh, actually, arguing no, no, about no. it in the back. No, something for chat. So me and Jesse during your co-stream yesterday, we were having a debate of who Can you not would multicast? Beat some... Can we keep working? My fault. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a player. Um Jesse thinks he could beat me in a race. I'm gonna smoke you in our race. And I'm just gonna be completely honest. I have raced four different members of talent I've never lost in foot races. Who, who would you take? Like, be, be like completely honest. Like, be so for real. If we were laced up at the edge of a football field, whatever you want it to be, who do you think is winning in that race? I can't run. That's like just not even what I asked. <laughs> in any like, situation, that is just not what I asked. Like, what is good with both of you? You're stacking this Jenga up like all weird. I'm asking you a question that revolves me and you, and you just say you can't run. Like, holy. Gabe, do you want to go first or second? All right, it's Jenga time. Whoa! You can't take it from the top. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, Who doesn't know the there. rules? You now? know the rules? Can I just have a little fun? No. I asked you a question. You didn't. You. He still. And I, I gave you an answer. honest answer. What? Wait. What did he say? I he can't said run. He can't run. That's not an. Okay. It was an answer, and just not to his question. Okay. You know what? When you're right, you're right, Jacob. All right. It's Jenga time. Gabe, go first. <sighs> Is this like a truth or dare Jenga? What? A truth or dare? <laughs> what? <laughs> sure. You pull this, and then you gotta like tell the truth or a dare. <laughs> if you want to play that way, you can do it. Jacob, right. why are you filming? What's your truth or dare? Okay. No, he's got to do it successfully first. Ooh, he is did it? it. You, have you never played Jenga? What are you doing? Oh, yeah. Sorry. My fault. That's insane. I was looking That's at you because I thought you were going to ask me a truth or dare question. So now I ask you a truth or dare? Well, you already ruined it, so let's keep this on. Let's keep the show on the road. I have people DMing me like, bro, Lax doesn't know Jenga. This is embarrassing. <sighs> Dude, I flicked it off to have a little fun. <laughs> I'm making it tough. I put I pulled the second one from the same side. Why? Cause I like a high stakes game of Jenga. What do you mean why? Cause I play real. You aren't a real person. <laughs> <laughs> um. Let me tell you, I do not have hands of a surgeon. You play video games. You better have. Good I'm a bump this table too. <laughs> How does no? You might be the slowest Jenga player I've ever met. I'm thinking. I'm What's there to think about? I'm strategizing Grab right a now. block! <laughs> Actually, we're going to have fun with it. We're going to flick it out. You, you're going to lose, like, round three. Most Jenga rounds last, like, 30 rounds. You're throwing Do they? right off the bat. Yeah, with good players. I've been so critical today, game. I don't think you've ever I been apologize. a good player. I've been a great Jenga player. You're a good GeoGuessr. Dude, I'm so good at GeoGuessr. Let's run Saint some right Donis now. was a crazy island. You can't say that without context. I said St. Lucina. Look how quick I made that call. Look how flawless that was. It's working so well. Imagine if it fumbled. We're good. Lax has picked the rules up pretty quick for someone who didn't know Jenga five minutes the ago. Rules. Oh! That's, I take back everything I just said. He just touched it with his leg. Everything I just said. You can see my legs. My legs have not moved. I sit like this. Can we get a chessboard? Can we just get a chessboard? No, actually. That's genuinely the fastest game of I'll Jenga you I've ever played. You don't I'll get to you lose at Jenga and then four. request a different game. The rules are you Jenga. You lost in Connect Four. You lost in Jenga. You're going to lose in the race. never happened. You're going to lose in the race. All right. Let's restack this. You're going to lose. Dude, we took longer to stack it the first time Best than we did three. playing the game. Best of three. Oh 
Come on. Hey, come, come on. on. Be best of three is fine, but then you can't extend it to a best of five if you lose the next best one. Best of five. You ain't losing. Please. You, you, have to, you have to take a loss as it comes. I'm praying this game starts soon, chat. You and me both. We're working on it. Hi, Ferme. What's up, That's Ferme? your head. Thank you. He's, he's getting the blocks <laughs> for us. He's just now. not in frame. Oh, wait. Nope, still not. Still not in frame. Ferme. Hey, there he is. Ferme made the NAL stream. I'm going to be honest, guys. Which is true in multiple ways. Ferme made the NAL stream, and he also made the NAL stream. It's true in both ways. Really I got to really be completely game. honest. Like, I didn't play a lot of Jenga growing up. And it it's shows. obvious. Well, I was playing chess. I was playing something a little more sophisticated. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. But anyways, and I was also, like, just playing sports. You know, I wasn't pulling blocks out and stacking them on top of each other. Yeah, and where did you playing sports get you in life? What do you mean? It led me a professional gaming career because it kept my competitiveness going. But you still can't play Jenga awesome. properly? Well, I don't really see this as, like, super competitive. It's more so, like... Jesse's yeah. taking it super competitive. Why can't you? I'm trying. Jacob, you haven't even played. Yeah, True. Jacob, you haven't even played. You can't even run. Uh, <laughs> it's not my job to play. It's my job to watch other people. There was the NGR clip. Yes, this is the clip that I talked about where he <laughs> somehow... Started the game. I've never seen anyone been able to... <laughs> successfully repel into Solar Window and destroy the guy on Solar Stairs. In fact, there, no one in the history of Siege has ever repelled into Solar Window. Well, the interesting part was someone went in before NJR, lost Died. their life, and NJR just decided, well, <laughs> I'm going to do it too, and found success, and actually found a 3K out of it, which is insane to me. I would never do that in my entire career. And that's why you're on the couch. This is why I'm True. on the couch. There you go. You know what they say, if you can't play... Analyze. If you can't analyze, cast. Cast. Now we're casting. If so you what's can't, after this? If you can't cast, host. Host. If you can't, if you can't host, this actually gives me anxiety. I don't know how to finish the the loop. Lax, did you hear production there? Oh, that's production telling me. Lax, I will bet you fifty dollars you can't win this game of Jenga. <laughs> oh, why did you say it to me then, Mr. Production? Okay. Production's giving us mixed signals right you now. You can call me Gabe, like we're friends. Actually, never mind. Let's keep it business. I was gonna say, I don't know. If, I don't know if I'm messing. Jesse you like just that. lost friend privileges like that. It didn't take long. Five two for DZ, <laughs> guys. Do you think Luminosity win another round for this entire VOD? Five seconds left. What? What? All right. Do you want me to go first? It's time? like already leaning. Yeah. It doesn't have to be perfect. That makes it harder. That's like good. It's good for business. All right, go. He picks his moment. Nice. Hold on, hold on. He's eager with it. I'm not even placing mine down, and he's picking up his, his block. We're playing speed Jenga now. We were playing speed Jenga last time, it felt like. This is just not the block to pick, by the way. Work the mid. whole tower is moving right now. He's really working it. There's definitely looser blocks right now. Really Are you ready for this, chat? Are you ready for this? This is, yeah, great job. Holy well moly. Well done. Do you like that? A little flick of the wrist. See, like, you do stuff like this, and it just makes me wonder, like, why am I even playing with you? What do you mean? Oh, no. I should have pushed that out the other way. Never punished, though. Never punished. You're going to throw again. That's fine. Do I risk it? Yes. No. Oh, I could have. <laughs> I easily could have. That just, like, popped right out. Why do you go for the most, like... What? Nothing. What? Nothing. You don't like my block choices. This is, this is how a champion plays. This is how a champion does it. No. I don't know what's more competitive, the oh DZ LG game or. I'm surprised we're still on. I thought we would have dropped this bit 15 minutes ago, but we're still doing it. I actually think Jenga is such a well made game. It really tests both the mind and body in a way that few board games can. My heart is racing right now. Mm -hmm. You have to take mm -hmm. risks playing this game. Is this guy loose? No. This guy loose? This is no. the most. Am I not wrong? When you play Jenga, if you touch a piece, don't you have to commit to that piece? No, no, no. Once you, you can only use one hand, but you're allowed to test pieces. Um, but like once a piece is like mostly out, 
you're pretty much committed. I think this is the most Laxing's old heart has raced oh, no. since he played in Team oh, Reciprocity no. in 2019. Oh no, and I can't touch that piece. I can't. Why did I use my left hand? Oh no. To prove a point, to assert dominance. I actually may lose. There you go. He never loses. He's never punished. Oh my god, he's so good. Oh my Don't god, do that, so dude. Good. Dude, you patting your your knees might make that thing fall. Like, hey, get your leg out from there. I'm sorry. Sorry, Already foul. <laughs> Whoa. What are we doing? Grab the one I was bumping. I'm gonna give you some tips here. That's the block you want. You think so? Yeah. Nah. Bro, that's out. You gotta commit now. Oh my See, I told you. I just got a, I got a DM from our friend uh, Light Rose, who casts uh -huh. Element 2. Uh -huh. um, quote, I have an idea. Laxing should bench Jesse. There was, no, there was no ulterior motive for this, end quote. Can uh, you bench? I mean, how much does chat think what my max bench is? No, you just how much do you think Jesse weighs and can you bench him? Camera feed up and running. <laughs> He's sizing him up. Hmm. <laughs> With those raggedy shoes. Whoa! <laughs> what do my shoes do to you? Those things have been through some. They definitely that looks like the final. They That's definitely. Up. Uh, Jesse probably weighs. Let me know if I'm close. All right. Like, okay. like in all honesty. Yeah, like I will. Close. Jesse, do you know how? Do you know how much you weigh? I think uh, ballpark. Yeah. How okay. tall are you? I'm five seven. You're five seven. Yeah. Jeez. Do you think I was taller or shorter? You need some shape ups. What the? Um. More platforms on the shoes. You don't have to use a box. You are one. Either high 40s or 50. Not quite. 225. 225. <laughs> no. You know what? It makes sense. It makes sense. No, you actually nailed it. I think I'm 140 something. Yeah. Yeah. I figured you're a small fry. So you can bench about 140 something then. My max is 315. <laughs> so you can bench 140 something. I can. You said you. I would Good hope. Job. I would hope you could. That's bench. actually impressive. No, 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 I'm not that you could bench 130. I'd hope you could bench me. Oh, yeah, easy. With your max being 300. I could bench you with one arm. And then bench another Jesse with the other arm. Chad, if this game gets delayed another three hours, we have exclusive content lined up for you. At the end of the show, stay Jesse tuned for when Gabriel <laughs> Laxing Miralez will oh, this bench is going. press. This is going. You got Dude. it. No, 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 you got this. You got this. The camera can't quite see it, but this is a... Oh! Ooh! You're fine. You're that was fine. a risky play. Holy moly. Look at you go. I always believed in you. I'm about to lay this on there, and it's about to just... Imagine. Second time was the charm. Stop. I also find it hilarious. Dude, you can't quite see it on the camera. I'll take a picture of it. This thing is perched so precariously on the end of the table. Like, it's, high, it's so close stakes. to falling off. Can I switch hands now? Maybe not. Jesse's so tactical with this. You should be a surgeon. Dude. I'm over here like this, like. If I hadn't played so many video games, I probably would be a surgeon. I could see you being a doctor. I was pretty good at math. I wouldn't trust I was really bad at biology, though. I think that's kind of important. That's kind doctors. of disqualifying, unfortunately. Yeah. But I just found it boring. Mitochondria. Ugh. Oh my god, no. This is not it. No, not that's too that. scary. Don't do that one. Oh, that's it. Ooh. There you go. Well done. Okay. That Dude, that was like, easy. It came out like butter. That was nothing. Good job. That was well played. Is this guy loose down here? I don't know. I was looking at that one, but I don't trust it. I think I that one's going to move. Either. I don't trust that. What about, <gasps> this is a but do it anyway. Nah, oh. that, that, one's, Ooh. that one's smooth. That's not even making it change. It's almost like that one wasn't we got a fun. one block. We got a one block holder down there now. And we got one Ooh, player alive on LG. Silent trying to 1v4 to save LG's chances in this round. And he doesn't. He gets smoked on solar stairs. And DZ claimed their second win of the stage. What would have happened had LG won this game? Had they won, they would have gotten, let's say, three points. They're regulation boys. Absolutely nothing. They'd move up to 15, which oh would God. vault Dude, don't over, that over DZ. Nothing's going to. You worked hard on that. That's not it. That's this might not be the last it. play of the game. That's not it. This could be it. I just heard Fermi go, Ooh. I heard someone in the back go that. Might not have been Fermi. Come on, you, you have to finish it now. I don't think You so. committed to the piece. We have to get this or we can't end nah, the Nah, he's not committed. Nah. You, could, you could pick a different block. 
I think they'd be fine. To it. You're not committed to that? No, no. I wouldn't. It's in a rough spot. But you, should you, go, you got one more move anyway. I should take that one right here? No, no. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, do that one. <clears throat> making moves, making moves. No. Dude. No. He wants it. Maybe. Maybe. He's close. Maybe. Here, that... watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. Uh-oh. I'm flinging this. <laughs> That's going actually right <laughs> towards me. <laughs> you were just doing it to fling a projectile right, right. at him. You're just trying to get violent. I see. I got. I, I just got a call from production that said we, we need to. We, we can we finish the Jenga game? Does that mean we can let them play this? Do this game to completion? All right, go nuts. Finish the game, guys. This is all we have right now. Are we holding up the game? No. In okay. fact, <laughs> we are not holding up the game. In fact, the game is waiting for us to finish. What? That would. Why are yours so smooth? <laughs> I know how to pick them, bro. I literally slap mine out of there. By choice. It was a good choice. You don't have to be that boisterous about it. Oh. Ooh. That's a good one. That's a good one. Well done. Well done. <laughs> that might be the winning move right there. You see how much it jiggled? Careful. Okay. This Correct. is actually an intense game. I think this is like Dude, I'm the telling most you, intense if you, Jenga I've ever if, played. If you play life. Jenga, do you have to golf cast it? Like down here. You don't have to cast anything. Jesse going for a good move. God, Jesse is a surgeon with this. Come I'm back. It looks you? like the bottom is getting really precarious right now. Laxy may not have too many options. I'm telling you, I'm experienced. I'll look back, survey what he has on the board. Plenty of things still at the base that might give him plenty of ample opportunity. Yeah, but we want to go risky here. We don't want Will to he take it? Ooh, sounds like he might want to go risky. Let's see what he does. Can I use both hands? No. That's explicitly against the rules in the game. tried to use two hands there. Ooh. I could bump you and mess you up so Risky hard. Risky play. Right now. Hey, give me a second. Hey, take your time. Big reward if it works out, though. It would mean that entire layer only has one block left. And it works out. Jesse now on hold the on, back hold on. foot. He's place that still. It's an easy task. Yeah, don't drop it. I'm nervous. I can tell. <laughs> The risk is now at an all-time high. All it would take is one person kicking the table and the entire tower falls. It's kind of the case always, isn't it? But specifically in this case. Okay. Ah, that's risky. That is risky. Pondering something on the bottom level. I'm doing the math. No, I don't think we can. Report from the sideline. Jesse is doing the math. It's my first tricky one. Testing a few options. Nothing confirmed. Jesse will not commit to the bit yet. <sighs> Are all of these so stuck? Oh. Tension is high. Oh, he speaks. No. He speaks and he finds the one. And now he speaks laxing. And he finds the must one. find a response here in the 28th frame or whatever. You're sweating now. I see the I sweat right glands now. dripping down. Dude, the more you guys like lean forward and backward on the couch, the more I think it's about to fall. Like, might be falling this turn. I don't know if Gabe's got it anymore. Dude. He scoped that option out really quick. Not, he's not clear yet, though. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh -oh. Hold on. Hold Stop crap. talking. Stop talking. Laxie needs to nail the dismount. And shaking, he does it anyway. Wonderful game for Mr. Miralez. Nah. Jesse already has one. Nah, it's shocked. He might have been prepped, but now he reconsiders. I've been saving this one. Bottom option. He had that one in his back pocket. Nervous to place, though. It's really light on this side, down towards the bottom especially. Will the weight imbalance be too much? We're chilling. The picture in picture, that's crazy. I'm not gonna lie, this game might not end. Can we get Dude, Jenga's instant... supposed to be a long game? Gabe just kind of beef for the last. Can we get instant replays on like good Sorry, ones, laxing. by the way? I'm sure, I'm sure we have a replay machine working. Yeah, make production do more work. More work right now. This is like your options are getting really oh, low. Oh my goodness. Nah, that one's on the edge. I'm feeling fantastic. You gotta go up top eventually, but the problem is there's not enough weight, right? Oh my 
When you Gosh. go up top, the weight is not really strong enough. The more we stack, the more it leans closer to the edge this way, by the way. <laughs> like, I think it's I think it's chalk. You got it, you gotta make a, you gotta make a try. Something has to happen. The rules of Jenga state there is no surrender. You go until you fall. Is this the last moment for Mr. Mirrorless? It's also technically possible to tie Jenga. It's literally moving in every situation where I touch. Welcome to Jenga? Is it technically a J Jenga experts in chat? Is it a tie if you cannot physically remove any more blocks or is it just whoever's turn it ends up being auto loses? Mm. Is this the dagger? Here, no, GG. He'll attempt the flick one final time. And your winner, uh, Jesse there was, there was nowhere. There was nowhere. Everywhere I touched at the top, it was falling. I'd like to thank my mom. Um, Shout like out Mama Chick. my fiance. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Dark Zero and, um, and Luminosity for Thanks a lot, Dark Zero. refusing to play this game. Um, <laughs> That's totally what happened. No. Uh, and I'd like to thank Gabe for being a humble and worthy opponent. GG's. Okay. That was a good game. I've never heard the word humble used to describe His hands are actually super sweaty. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> I wonder why. This is a nerve wracking game. Did, did, did your hands sweat more playing this or sweat more on stage playing uh, siege matches? Nah, I actually never got nervous in siege matches. Never? I, I, nah, I actually thrived off playing in front of a crowd. Well, I love the hype. Couldn't throw a plan, Jenga. Just is oh, how it is. A little more Let's take a look at the bracket because now we have some <laughs> updates we need to walk you through. Dark Zero and Luminosity is the game that was supposed to happen at this time slot, but will not be happening today due to server inconsistencies. So what will happen is pretty darn simple. M80 and Oxygen is still going to be played tomorrow, but this quarterfinal, DZ and Luminosity, will be played as the first matchup tomorrow as the first of three best of threes. There were originally three best of three scheduled, but this is just how things are getting rearranged. Once that happens, then we'll have the semifinal between M80 and Oxygen, and then the second semifinal between Beast Coast and the winner of Dark Zero Luminosity. So all of these games are still happening, including the fifth place match. It just means that the order in which they happen is a little bit different because we weren't quite able to finish all the games we were supposed to finish today, so. I mean, even if we didn't get to watch the second game, the first game, I loved it because my predictions went absolutely out the window. True. You have basically <laughs> lost the race for this. Yep. The At first, this point. I lost Jenga. I lost the belt. You lost oh, There's still four. a block down there, too, we didn't pick up. We'll get it after. Yeah, we'll get it after. No, we'll we'll get that's, a, that's a production issue. But I still think, nonetheless, watching that M80 game, I mean, M80 are looking extremely strong if they keep that performance going. Yeah. I mean, throughout the rest of this and going to that OXG game. That OXG game is going to be tight tomorrow. I'm really excited for that one. I really hope that we can be here together to watch it as a family. I believe we will be here together. To I hope watch so. It. Are we fans? I was, I was told Lose the Jenga game may be disappearing. Maybe so uh, excised from the family? Yeah. I wasn't part of those comms. Nope. Well, that's your problem. Thanks a lot for joining us, everybody, on the North American League playoffs. We will be back tomorrow. Three best of threes, quarterfinal plus two semifinals. And tomorrow is also the day where we determine the first two North American teams that go all the way to the Manchester Major. For everybody here at the Philadelphia crew, have a good night. We'll see you tomorrow.